Hi, hello, hi, we are live. Honestly, I didn't see the thing, so I didn't do the intro. Anyway, greetings, everyone. Uh, today is Sunday, the the 5th of December. I'm your host, Karama X, with my beautiful co-host, Ish. And uh, welcome to Between Two Keep Stars, the pretty much only show to run on Sundays at this time, and therefore automatically is the best, because just because you're the only one does not mean you're the I was going somewhere with that, but you know what? Let's just leave it like that. I, I think that's a perfect summary of the show, actually. That, that, technically, that, 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 technically, you're still the best, even if you don't have any competition. Absolutely. Absolutely. Insert cynical remark about null blocks here. Okay, so we have a lot to talk about this time, and uh, we have a special guest joining us. We've got Loki Choco Chips from uh, Hero Coalition, not to be confused with the old Hero Coalition that died because PL decided that they were going to uh, make their own new bro organization, and Brave Newbies said no, so they invaded. It's a totally new Hero Coalition, and you know because it's got a dot on the end. That hey is... Guys. Hey, that is that is the most important way to signify difference and newness in EVE, is the dot. I mean, that's precisely the conversation I wanted to bring up, and even just making the alliance was literally just new bro organizations and the state of the game and all this other... Like, there's actually some thought that went into the into why we chose to put a dot on the end of that specific coalition. But, uh, yeah. Very nice, very nice. We will definitely get into that. We will definitely get into some of the uh, concepts behind Hero Coalition overall. want to start by talking about this big recent battle, uh, which which Hero Coalition was was a big part of, want to talk about this battle. Let's hear the let's hear the AAR. Let's hear the perspectives, and uh, go and link for us the battle report that's accurate. I don't want to see the Reddit uh, filter. I don't want to see the uh, this side that side filter. What's the correct capture? What's the correct narrative for what came out of this battle? Is that, like, is that directed towards me, or is that like a Riker question? Oh, I don't know. Okay, because like I don't know, man. Like there's there's a few different versions of the battle report. In basically all in all battle reports, we've we won by a very large margin. We'll just put it that way. And the numbers look relatively relatively accurate, relatively even on uh, on either sides. I mean, yep. at the end of the day, that's basically you know that's the crux of it. So you can say, oh well, they you know we were we were actually thirty two point five percent risk efficient. We were actually thirty four point five percent. At the end of the day, you lost. You lost pretty fucking hard. And it was a it was a very very long, very very interesting battle uh, that happened on a server which uh, whose node was not reinforced, uh, which is always great. Honestly, it, always it rekindles my. Are we back? I think so. We should be we should All right, so just to recap where we left off, basically a UW9 Fortizar, uh, RC Fortizar, got uh, RF'd a couple days ago. So this was the timer for it. Uh, we were expecting to just basically be taking a fight against fire. As things happen, fire decided to bat phone. Uh, well, I mean, tests were obviously going to be involved in this because tests seem to be involved in all things fire these days. And then also, uh, Pandemic Horde was also bad phoned. We basically got a DM from some goon people who were like, hey, what's going on? What's all this stuff that we're hearing about something happening in Curse? And we're like, oh, well, we just have a Fortizar timer. And they said, oh, okay. And, uh, well, they showed up, so... We went in with about 100 less people than our opposition at the beginning of the fight. You'll see that the battle report is quite even now. That's because goons were actually able to reinforce with another 100 people. Additionally, about mm, three quarters into the 
three quarters into the fight. Essentially, Fire had a full Munin Fleet. Pandemic Horde came with what I believe are speed serves. You can correct me on that if I'm wrong, but I can actually look at one. And uh, although that was our understanding at the time when we took the fight, and uh, test came with some rogues, a, ro a rogue sniper battleship comp. Yeah, so that was that was a throwback. I was like, holy that, fuck. That alone like got me excited about this VR. Like, I don't know, just uh, I'm I'm so eager to see things besides hacks get fields on. Although this is a very hack heavy fight, as it will happen, as you have to expect. Um, but uh, it's still. Like it, it, okay. it got me excited to see the rogues. I, I think someone, I think someone on Reddit had said, uh, like, uh, please bring those again. Now that person was biased because they happened to come from a side they got to blow up those rogues. Rogues did not uh, prove victorious. But man, I, I just want to see some more battleship fights. I know it's hard to encourage with uh, what's going on in Eve right now, but I, I miss them. God well, bless something them. Of, something of note was that um, so RC were in typhoons. Uh, a new little comp that we've been doing from time to time. And so you could almost make the argument it was a Typhoon versus Rogue fight-ish, but it really wasn't. Like, there was 250 minutes on grid uh, yeah. with, with, with the uh, the small Rogue fleet. So uh, just to correct myself, the uh, the Pandemic Horde serve fit is very similar to the RC fit, where they actually just have a uh, a polycarbon uh, rig in, in the rigs. Then they have full uh, ballistic control units and then yep. the ADC. So it's not it's not a tradition. It's not an actual speed serve. It's just like a, a faster version of like what the the old like workhorse like full shield serve used to be. Um, so yeah, when I say speed serve, I'm talking about like having an overdrive in the lows and going like you know above 2k per second. But yeah, that's not what they were in. Incidentally, I think they did the most damage to our Typhoons. Uh, at one point, it was just Serbs killing our Typhoons. Um, but uh, yeah, the fire felt like it was a good thing to drive their entire Munin fleet at zero of our Typhoons. So that was fun. Uh, Goons brought um, an Eagle fleet, and then in it brought a small Munin fleet. Reinforcements, I have no idea what they brought, because at that point, I was uh, dual boxing between uh, helping target calling uh, shooting stuff with my typhoon, and then also uh, fax reps. So it was a little bit of a little bit of a, a full intensive uh, tie dye fight for us. But, yeah, I think that uh, I think that out. covers the main comps that shit up. We still some jackdaw reinforcement come in, uh, some uh, you know random things like that. The usual bevy of uh, support ships and sabers and things like that. But I think you covered the uh, the main coverage. Munins galore on the opposing side. Lots of Serbs, as you mentioned, and uh, looking and doing a breakdown here, uh, definitely, without even knowing some of the details that you just provided, you can see that the Serbs came out a lot cleaner than the Munins did. So you're saying Munins decided that the warp in point to B was sitting zero on a phone, huh? Well, this is the thing, all right? So I have there's two trains of thought. Like, you have old school FCs who do a bunch of preparation before a fleet, who know how to manually pilot, and who were in fights that involved battleships sometime before, like, you know, this last, like, five-year stint of EVE where all we've been doing is fucking around with hacks. And then you have FCs who do no preparation before their fleets, don't really know how manual piloting works necessarily, and so, as such, like to keep it range of certain FCs. And, uh, yeah, and, and weren't around for those battleship fights. So they don't really understand what happens when you get to zero on battleships. But what ends up happening is, like, newts have depreciating returns on distance. The closer you get to the newts, the more the newts hurt you. And uh, what well, unfortunately happened was uh, I, I one of the uh, fire FCs were keeping at range, I'm sure, or approaching Mr. Mike Flood, who were in Eagles. And Mike decided to just uh, come really close to our battleships. And then we were able to basically just start nuting everything and killing everything the funny thing about about ships and eve is that they require cap to to function <laughs> to, you need your adc doesn't work without it your props don't work without it now their guns still worked without it so we were losing some battleships but for the most part it was pretty uh it was a pretty big slaughter and a cap warfare it's funny to me because like cap warfare really isn't used a lot in eve it seems like like for the big coalition fights yeah, we haven't we haven't seen we haven't seen as much control as I think that there's potential to field uh, in the null block fleets. Maybe if the meta swings around a little bit, but I agree with you. I I actually don't see as many uh, efforts to uh, initiate the cap warfare. But having those foons with that neutralization fit, 
uh, it does give you the opportunity if those hacks make a poor choice you know people get cocky in the projectile ships and say well you know I don't need capacity to shoot my guns yeah but shooting your guns isn't enough when you're at zero on a, on a ship twice your size so you, you're, you're gonna get wiped off field you're gonna have a hard time here uh, looking at these uh, at these foons so I can see e each one fit with a single heavy energizer uh, energy neutralizer attack two newt but being able to spread those newts out effectively, being able to get people to understand to uh, just hit each person covering a mutant, that's, that can be absolutely devastating as you start to double up on them uh, between two newts, 10 newts, 20 newts, that sort of thing on a single mutant or spread around the fleet uh, certainly can have a great effect. So pretty nice. And, and besides that, these are, the, these are a, a pretty, um, pretty tanky variant. I, I do spy a particular module I want you to talk about if if you're willing to at least uh, give some commentary on it, Loki, and that's that you're making use of the relatively new SRS, the signature signature radius suppressor. Mm -hmm. you, want to, you want to talk a little bit about that uh, that and how it's working out for you? Sure, it's the uh, the ADC for battleships. Oh, just on the newt front too, we did have ten Armageddon's, which also really really helped with the newts. Um, so yeah, the ten Armageddon's did some fucking work as well. They were uh, primarily focused on newting out the monitors and then. Uh, primaries and secondaries stuff like that and then uh all other you know typhoons were needing just other things but um yeah the the sig suppressors are actually pretty nice i actually got i like, got targeted really early in the fight um probably the first i mean the first 10 minutes i was probably maybe the the fifth battleship that that got locked up and fired upon um i don't think it, it was definitely not the entire grid shooting at us i think it may have just been the munins but because of how bad the server conditions were, I found myself a little out of position, uh, but I was correcting it. I was, I was pulling back in a, a little bit. I was a little bit closer to them than the others, so they, they targeted me. And I hit my SIG suppressor and uh, broadcasted for reps, and I actually was able to, uh, to catch reps from the facts and survive. So basically, if you don't know what those are, uh, it basically just reduces the signature radius of the, the battleships enough so that like generally um things that would have a harder time tracking battleships are you know not going to be able to to hit you as badly other battleships and stuff like that so it may have been that i was getting shot by the rokes or something and uh my six suppressor actually saved me the mutants probably still would have tracked so i'm not entirely sure how that works but i have we have used them actually quite a bit in the past on um on a Mac fit that we did when we were fighting NSH in low sec, it was Tempest fleet issues against Max, and uh, we made use of those, and they actually worked out quite well. Nice, yeah, and I think ADC of battleships is the perfect way to describe them. H having that temporary dip in signature can mean the world, especially if you're uh, uh, under that pressure from larger gunships like Rogue. So th that's that's cool to see the effectiveness there and to hear that. What what else do you want to talk about in this battle? What what else do you want to go in? Um, I mean, just that you know, I mean, obviously we weren't really expecting the numbers that that kind of ended up coming out of this. Um, I think it says a lot to the state of the game, where you have such null block involvement in a single kind of structure timer like this. It's not uncommon, obviously, for null blocks to get involved in you know little proxy things that are happening in their kind of general spheres of influence but the amount of participation that was seen for a single fortizar armor timer was actually is very unexpected that's why the server wasn't actually reinforced we didn't actually expect anyone to really show up for this we expected fire to show up and maybe they were going to bring some friends but certainly didn't ex expect the goons to show up and you know really didn't expect the the level of uh, pressure to be put on the server that was actually put on there well, and I think one thing that's important too is that now that the war is over, you know, you've got a lot of null blocks that are kind of looking for stuff to do. So it it would make sense that you know bored null blocks would be like, oh, hey, there's a fight, let's go over here and let's go and get some content. Right. It's just that I I wasn't necessarily sure to what extent those null blocks were bored. And uh, I don't know. It seems like there's, there's a lot answer. of fucking people who are really fucking <laughs> bored. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, I guess at this point, it's like, well, I guess we should reinforce the the node for every Fort Desire timer that happens now because someone's going to find out about it and show up. Yeah, I I, I think uh, you know, I I keep hoping and praying for some end result to come out of Ether Wars uh, testing and all of that, uh, where where node reinforcement is, is less of an emphasis or or maybe even a thing of the past. But for for now, I think. We're going to see a lot more node reinforcement requests from smaller fights. Like you said, I think there is going to be a lot more attachment to them because uh, pe people love something to fight over. 
and e even if it's not their fight they can feel a sense of belonging and, and i'll say for some of these groups um not their fight has been a story of a number of wars you know you can, you can take a few narratives of the last major war that happened right but to a certain extent uh horde didn't have the same uh stake in that fight that tested that brave did and that all that and that, that proved to be true of course with the conclusion of the war and the way everything wound down and uh pretty pretty clear who took the strongest beatings to the face over it so a small fortazar out in the middle of nowhere well you might think well what's that got to do with horde what's that got to do with Ainet, bastion or goons or any of these people it doesn't matter because it gives a sense of attachment gives a mission gives a purpose people are like yeah let's get in the big fleet let's get the big fights going and then you end up with a thousand people in a system over a fort Azar that most people are like i don't even know who this coalition is <laughs> but uh th i i think that can actually be a really positive thing about it. it can be a good thing um how do you feel Luke? do you feel like it can also be an albatross or can it also be a challenge to have people so interested in the things that are going on around your system or is it, or is it mainly just bringing blessings I mean, from a PvP standpoint, like I, I like big fights. I don't mind the tie-dye fests. Um, I look forward to those kinds of moments where, I mean, you're able to get, I don't know, 150 kills or something crazy, right? In like a single fight. Um, I, I like that. As somebody who just started an alliance, who's looking at the politics involved in all of this, it becomes very tricky, right? Because it becomes very easy as for Fire to say, as they did say, oh, these people bat phone the goons. Uh, that's why we did all this. And it's like, no, that's not why you did that. You were going to bad phone anyway. You already bad phoned. The goons incidentally just happened to like call us up and be like, yo, what's going on? And we're like, well, we have this Fortezone that's probably going to die. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, okay. And then like, you know, next next we hear they're, they're showing up to the fight. So um, while that's appreciated, uh, politically that becomes very, very sticky, we'll say. So uh, I can definitely, you know, uh, from a PvP standpoint, I think it's great. I think that it would be a lot better if there was a lot more going on in the game right now. There were more players logging in, uh, less people pissed off with the the way things are going. Uh, I, I think we all know people, people like that. Um, you're looking at scarcity. You're looking at just randomly weird game mechanics changes, industry changes that don't really fix or seem to even try to fix the problems that season yeah. stated exist you know what i mean yep. um i don't even know if we can argue that like i think we could argue even that the problem the perceived problems that exist are not even problems at all um and that you know probably have simple simpler solutions or less less extreme solutions so i see that as being you know these kinds of fights this is a thing where hey something's happening let's go and everybody shows up and we're like holy fuck okay well let's let's go then let's gear up uh we got a great show out from rc uh, on this which was which was great it would have been really weird to you know to to take out a, a smaller fleet to this because i mean not having fact support not being able to have fact support for this would have been probably pretty pretty devastating that being said we did lose two facts pretty quickly it's amazing how quickly 650 people can alpha facts uh shockingly <laughs> so we we did have so what we did we had uh we had myself i was kind of near the uh near the fortazar i was within te tether range of the fortazar this battle took place kind of near the back of the fortazar uh away from it uh about 80 kilometers or so so mm -hmm. we had two forward active facts that were repping those two basically ate shit we had one that was a little bit closer that survived and then mine also survived and by the end of the fight i was actually able to effectively land reps but uh yeah, we uh, both of our both of our fax pilots they had active tank fax and they basically threw their hands up in the air and said, "Well, I tried." <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm actually looking at the apostle that bit it right now, and uh, yeah, with with the active tanking that that unfortunately, uh, active tanking really popular for subcap triage. It, it's usually a a great call because you can get those rep cycles and it just wrap up an entire fleet's worth of damage. But when you have this many rokes and serbs on field, the highest individual damage was 0.8. So like you said, uh -huh. you know, the 276 pilots involved, there's 276 uh, rokes and serbs and, uh, and other ships unleashing some fury onto this. The, the act of tanking just doesn't pan out, and it makes you wish you had brought buffer instead. Should be an upvote option on Z-Kill for should have been a buffer fax, but is what it is. Uh, at the same time, l losing those two faxes, you can't look at this battle report and make any other conclusion than, well, that seems pretty worth it. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, it kept our fleet alive. Um, 
for a, a large portion of the fight, we weren't actually taking any damage. Like the, the the typhoons were taking minimal amounts of. They weren't really getting a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. Um, and the attention we did get actually kept the typhoons, you know, just just nice and healthy. So not a lot of attention was necessarily paid to them. It wasn't until we started, you know, nuding out and massacring the mutants that everyone's like, oh yeah, these typhoons are actually really really bad and we need to get them off field right now and then that's when the faxes started disappearing right they, they alphaed through two active tank faxes which even i was surprised by i didn't i didn't really respect the amount of damage that was on field until that moment i'm like holy fuck but uh, that being said we had we had more faxes that were able to land reps anyway that were further away uh so we were we were mostly fine i think there was a flurry there where we lost about 10 battleships in the period of about I don't know, two minutes in tie-dye. So that was pretty, uh, that was intense, but that was near the end when uh, once they did that and they were still hemorrhaging ships, I think they decided to pull out and they uh, started trying to extract. So we actually we actually ended up having a pretty, pretty like as a coalition, a pretty lucky go there. RC didn't really receive that much attention. We had the, uh, we had every advantage in the PVP department without, without taking too many losses. So, uh, I mean, for us, it was a great fight. We were super happy with the outcome. And uh, I don't know, maybe Fire uh, want to keep fucking around with us because <laughs> these fights are working out great. Yeah, yeah, g good content. It's it's good to see some uh, some pew pew happen down in that region, and it's interesting to see how this will settle out. I'm I'm interested to see where Wrecking Crew lands, uh, both in space and also in stature. As things go on, do you do you have any personal predictions you want to talk about? What what do you think is the state of Wrecking Crew from an honest perspective, from your perspective right now, and where where do you see that going? What's what's the next frontier? What's what's the farthest envelope for pushing Wrecking Crew? I don't think Wrecking Crew has any agenda to be pushing space. Um, I mean, we had you know Dreadbomb came in and and took some stuff right during the war, and they were able to do that. I was part of that. I was I was part of uh, Dreadbomb's command team at one point. Um, so I was involved, we'll say, in that in that process, which I didn't necessarily think was the best or smartest direction. But hey, we were that's what we were doing, so that's what we were doing. Um, so you know, Dreadbomb ended up taking an immense amount of space uh, all through Amencia, Tenebris, Fatabolus, and obviously it was not going to work out in a way that we were going to be able to hold everything. And what it happened was with fire basically growing seemingly overnight. I think they took a lot of the remnants of what Legacy used to be. Uh, it became very difficult to hold that space. I don't think that there's any active agenda in RC's thing. I don't know if RC ever really wanted to keep or have all that much space. Uh, that's my opinion, anyway. I, I, I doubt it. So I don't think that uh, I don't think that we're going to actively be trying to take things. Uh, I think that you know, curse is kind of a a buffer zone, NPC buffer zone uh, between some of the solve holding. Uh, locations that fire currently own and Dara League where you know we currently kind of preside so we obviously have interest in ensuring that our borders are not pushed uh, in that regard but I don't think that anyone's interested in taking more space than we already have so uh, to be now to be perfectly honest about you asked about the state of RC I would th I'd say that the state of RC is that we're in a, a state of rebuilding um, that being said, I think that you know we had a great showing last night. I think we had about as many people in fleet as we ever had before. So I don't think that it's necessarily a uh, doom and gloom scenario for RC at all by any means. But I think that it's going to keep getting better, specifically um, as a couple of new alliances have popped up in RC, one being Hero Coalition. And the other one being uh, Sigma Grindset. These are uh, two groups with similar we'll say sympathies and uh, similar philosophies about game mechanics and how things should be done and how we should go about, you know, doing industry, uh, how we should go about tr getting our guys into ships and, and manufacturing and working around the giant roadblocks the CCP have put in our way from an industrial perspective. So I think that we're, we're making short work of that. And uh, I think that generally, I mean, I was, I was super happy with our turnout last night. And I think that that's just going to continue and keep getting better. That's great. And let, let's let's talk about Hero Coalition a little bit. Let's talk about. Uh, you said that uh, you know being a new newer comer to a re uh, Wrecking Crew as a whole, along with Sigma Grind Set. Talk about what Hero Coalition is. Why did you form it? Where did where did you come from? Who are you? What are you doing here? What's going on? 
and what does this mean to you and why now what's what's the point of a net new alliance in this current state of eve uh, i heard the game was dying and uh, we're all gonna uninstall any day now i'm sure so what is hero coalition actually about okay so Hero Coalition essentially got formed mainly because my corp, so Banana Republic, needed a an industrial kind of side to it. And all of my guys in Banana Republic are like hardcore PvPers. For the most part, we do have one or two industrially minded people, but nothing significant enough to say, hey, we're like this industrial powerhouse. And it became very clear to me very early on uh, at the beginning of scarcity that, holy fuck, we're not going to be able to source these things uh, externally. We're going to have to start producing everything internally. And, you know, my corp doesn't have anything to produce things with. We don't have the people. We don't have the skills. We don't have um, any of these things. We have people with knowledge, right? But we didn't have enough of anything to say, oh, okay, like we're just going to start mass producing caps tomorrow or mass produce, you know, any kind of ship or hack or whatever. So to build caches was completely out of out of the question for us. And so I, I tried to remedy that by making Hero Coalition um, at a very early stage in my uh, corpse corpse kind of uh, lifespan once my corp got big and strong i decided hey we're going to take this into hero coalition and we're going to create a scenario where i think we look at game mechanics honestly we look at economics honestly and we say we're going to to build an economy that actually works in the game that is not about greed it's not about rmt it's not about what my members can do for me but instead it's about giving back to our guys. I think that exclusively, if your members have a lot of ISK, um, I think that they're more apt to buy things. If they're more apt to buy things, your industrialists can produce those things. And if your industrialists are producing those things, crabs are actually crabbing to make that happen. So you solve your ADM problem automatically by having a good economy. And that generally requires your alliance to not be taking as much of a cut and not maybe directing the ISK in places that you think it should go. Rather, you should be, you know, letting your members do the work, play the game, and encouraging them to, you know, buy things. So, you know, if uh, if I'm charging 15% on an R64, for example, instead of 60% on an R64, that means that my members have a lot more ISK in their pockets, right? It also means my alliance doesn't have as much, but my alliance has enough money, uh, you know, war chest, get out of jail kind of thing oh shit the hordes are coming to take over our space we need to run and do something else do we have enough risk for that yes so do we need more risk than that well that's a good question i don't think that we do i think that it's much better served in the hands of our members i think that some alliances in this game choose to to run their economy that way very few of them and then the rest of them certainly do not uh, i think that the ones that actually do allow their players to have risk in their pockets generally are like much more successful overall so in a way, Hero Coalition is kind of a statement as to, um, I think I know what's best for, uh, you know, my my guys or my alliance in in general, and I kind of want to put that on the line and see if I'm right. So far, we've had absolutely great uh, reactions from people. Obviously, everyone likes the idea of making more ISK and buy into a to a to a thing where we say hey like we're gonna have a great culture we're gonna have a strong economy and we want you guys to be a part of this and everyone so far has responded really well we've grown very quickly in the last couple of weeks very cool interesting to hear and, and i think a lot of the things you called out in philosophy are pretty important there i can say f from my own background of having spent a fair bit of time in small alliances smaller groups uh before joining the the, the big corporate evil uh, and then even building the uh, infrastructure and administration and, and some of the key decision making uh, within the corp that I'm in now, you're absolutely right that member empowerment is a huge thing. And, and the less infrastructure you have behind you, the less of a uh, big blue donut help and assistance that you can receive, I think the more critical it becomes, even though maybe there's this temptation like, well, the Alliance, you know, really could use the help because we don't have infinite war chests, we don't have infinite... Uh, capacity for production or you know for liquid uh, because we're just not as huge as some of these other big names but I think it's very cool that you've taken on that approach and I I, I quite frankly hope that it uh, continues to prove successful for Hero Coalition and for other alliances taking on that mindset as well now you had alluded at the beginning of the show that there, there was some some meaning behind the Hero Coalition name because as, as Karama pointed out this is not the first hero coalition that has existed in the game. So, all right, 
why hero collision coalition dot ah uh, you know just trying to be smug right like so northern coalition dot i mean vince did it first you're looking at the old northern coalition and him just kind of putting his middle finger up and saying now nah, we're gonna put a dot on the end of that and uh, show you guys how to do do it right right and so it was kind of kind of the same thing with hero coalition in a way uh we know that the state of the game right now requires us to uh bring in newer players or at least uh younger players in relation to like you know not 10 not 10 years old sorry my dog no worries she heard a noise and now the uh everyone knows <laughs> anyway um yeah so basically the state of the game currently requires us to to train newer people and bring them in it's an n plus one game um at its finest right now uh the, the days of just being able to take moons that mine themselves, uh, use that for SRP and go and get dank frags all day with your friends, kind of seems to be, you know, it's obviously, it's long dead. Um, and so this was kind of, in some extent, it's a little bit of a statement towards like, well, uh, you know, Hero Coalition originally was like basically brave leading the way, I believe, right? And along with Test and uh, like Samurai, whatever the fuck they're called. And uh, it was kind of a newer bro initiative, right? At the end of the day. And so this is kind of a, a throwback to that and just us saying, okay, well, we'll do that, but we're just going to do it a lot better. So if we got to have some new bros in here, if we have to have training, if we have to have support for new FCs and, and all of these things, like we're just going to do it better than you. Um, the way that I, I look at things generally is that, I mean, Liquid Isk is great and all, um, but Isk is kind of a means to an end. I look at, Essentially, what your job as an alliance should be in EVE Online uh, should have something to do with power projection, right? If you're not projecting power into the game, I don't think that you're doing things the way EVE is intended to be played. You know, everyone has their own play style, and that's great. If you just want to have a little industrial alliance, that's cool. But uh, I'm really into power projection. And the only way that we do that is with a strong economy, a strong industrial backbone, and you know, a continuous trickle of, of newer blood into a, a game that's now 18 years old and has 18 year old players who may be at the end of their, their careers, right? So that's, you know, that's kind of the entire philosophy about, uh, I guess the name and, and what Hero Coalition fundamentally is about then. It's about uh, growth and, uh, and getting over the obstacles that so many alliances seem to be having trouble with right now. I can dig it. Well, we uh, we know it's uh we, we know it's new. We know it's amazing because of the dot at the end. Everything that has a dot at the end in Eve has always been a good choice and always successful. But tongue and cheek aside, uh, appreciate you giving that perspective of the battle and of Hero Coalition as a whole. And I am sure Hero Coalition is recruiting uh, for those of you who are out there and homeless and interested. Uh, so. Uh, Karama, I understand we have another guest that you've brought into channel. Uh, yes, I'd like to uh, introduce the man, the myth, the legend, uh, Cable Yuta, who's actually just joining us. Hello. Hey, Cable. How's it going? I'm... That's pretty chill. For a second, I thought it was going to be Phantomite again. I was like, oh, is this another episode where Phantomite puts it? Yikes. What's up, yeah, Cable? That's every two weeks. It's, it's, it's not alive. yet paid to my time. So. So. Casually roped into joining a show. Jesus Christ. It was all SRP. <laughs> I know. Anyway, so uh, I think I'm going to... I don't want to be the guy to uh, say the elephant in the room, but... Uh... <laughs> I, I, I do. No, go on. Elephant in the room. So, uh, Cable, how how are things? They're 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 good. I'm currently um mending my brain after uh, the last four days of uh, being at a company trip with way too much alcohol. That's fun. Yes. Other than that, yeah, everything's good. I'm still not banned. Thank um, you for saying that. I, I didn't want to ask you because I didn't know how I was going to ask You just ask, are you banned? That's how it goes. And I am not. And yeah. Even though Minton was spreading the rumor that I was, which is pretty funny. So what... So Minton definitely said a lot of stuff. And I think I recall you saying one time that uh, you and PL kind of 
didn't have the best relationship? Me and PL. Or the something with that. Something, something, Sotios and PL. Oh, that, then you, you mean the, the, the NCPL group, then I guess. Yes. Yeah, sure. I mean, we, we used to. <laughs> um, until uh, I met in one shiny summer uh, evening, decided to uh, not have that anymore. On his own. Without anyone else in the group knowing about it, um, he decided to uh, terminate the arrangement violently, um, and 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 then all all the things that happened happened, you know, <laughs> as we can you know see on Reddit and and elsewhere. What did happen? What didn't happen? Reddit is never fully accurate, but it's rarely fully wrong. Where's the truth? Let's hear the cable. Let's hear the cable side of the story because we sure as hell have heard the non-cable side of the story a lot. Oh, very intentional that I have not engaged with with any of the media actually until SRP decided to bully me into go here. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm I'm actually really just kind of waiting for Minton to actually grow some balls and post part three, so we can get this show on the road. Because I'm waiting for him to post his, so I can post mine. You know. <laughs> And he promised the part three, but from what I'm hearing, his balls are crawling back up inside because he, he realizes he's fucking himself over. So, you know. Yeah, it, it seemed like he really tried to create like a, a crusade against you by like trying to rope in all the people that have ever like helped you or even dropped dreads. Well, so he did a. Let, 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 like from from a purely um as as best as I can unbiased point of view, he fucked up in in an attempt at making a crusade against me because he decided to be disingenuous about certain things uh and regarding certain individuals and groups within the game trying to cloud his own benefits from the whole situation and at the same time he misrepresented things that certain people said within said groups um and that just kind of fucked up the the all the momentum that he'd gotten from 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 the first video or video the first uh post sorry um so like he kind of shot himself in the foot there, which is part of the reason why I think that he is not going to post a part three, even though he promised and teased it. And don't get me wrong, I hope he does, because I know what it's what's going to be in it, <laughs> and it's going to be great. <laughs> so let let's talk about the part one, because that's what really blew the lid off things and got tons sure. of attention, got lots of polarized opinions. But the, the, b before we start, though, you have to understand that I can't divulge anything because that would ruin the thing that I'm going to post when he posts his part three. That's that's fair. That's fair. We'll we'll, we'll let you hold your trump cards. Uh, that's can't ask you to lay everything on the table yet. What are you willing to say? What are you willing to talk about about that first part so far? The problem is I pretty much can't comment on it until I post the my thing so you feel like you've got something that is as convincing or convincingly seeming of a pile of evidence as the soundcloud recording contained in the in the first post from mittens have you ever heard the definition of of lobbyism sure and if you haven't uh, i mean if you, you said you have i don't know like what like an Okay. Um, I, I instead like let me instead say how what I what I actually tried to say is a, a quote regarding lobbyism and what it's about, because lobbying is about foresight, and it's it's about anticipating your moves and devising countermeasures, and playing your trump card just after they play theirs. And 
that's kind of what I'm waiting for because if 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 what he's posted so far is his trump card, I don't even need to post mine <laughs> because like nothing's happening. Yeah, there there was definitely a lot of uh, oh well, you know we'll see it when you know cable gets banned and all that stuff. But like you said, you haven't been banned yet, so obviously CCP did like they they haven't found enough evidence. Can you tell us? Can you tell us if you've had any discussions with CCP or CCP's had any discussions with you about this? Re as, as in recent stuff, as in regarding this specific Reddit whatever thing. Uh, regarding this specific incident, uh, before or after or during the incident and the post and the stuff that came out of it. Uh, regarding this specific, these specific posts and whatnot, no. Actually, that's not entirely true. I did contact them, uh, regarding his use of the, uh, what's it called, um, What's it called? Like the 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 Eve subreddit to instigate a a witch hunt on an indiv a singular individual and to try and ostracize and do targeted in game harassment through the medium of Reddit. To to which that they decided that there is not anything they can do unless it occurs within the game, which is you know fair. That's that's cool. Uh, I kind of expected. But uh, even though I do think it's stupid that CCP has, in their own policies, uh, specific terms that allow them to act upon things occurring on mediums such as social media and, and other platforms outside of the EVE universe itself. But, you know, it, it's, it's for them to choose, and that's fine. Like, whatever. Fair enough. Well, fair enough. What, what it seems like, just from hearing what you have to say and what it... So looking at what like his group has to gain from taking you out, because you were like the king of Sotios and all that stuff. And if if they were paying you to have to go do Sotios and they had an agreement with you, if they were to ostracize you, then they'd be free to go and make all the money in the world. Um, I mean, sure. I mean, I mean, I mean just... there, there, there's no hiding that that they stood to gain hugely from 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 this attack on my character yeah and plus they were able to use it as leverage against various imperium groups well no because that that's where they screwed up <laughs> because they decided to engage people because and and like claim oh well you've you know you've helped cable in some form or way thus you must be rmting you know like that that's literally the argument you kill some of our dreads, so you must be RMTing. That's literally the claim he's making, essentially, in a very like short version. Well, and I found it kind of interesting how like how stupid how that easily, is. Well, how stupid and how just like how ready a lot of like ex pappy people, uh, especially Billy of all people, were all keen and ready to just jump on everyone, just jump on the bandwagon of oh well if you help Cable then you're part of the problem. Well, I mean. You need to understand that a large portion of the the null null block sphere of influence, or at least at least the the, the line members in general, have a very uh, very large amount of dislike taste for me as an individual. Uh, partly because of previous claims of things that I supposedly has done, uh, like Billy claiming that I am loot scripting and he has evidence of that, even though. I've had literal devs sit and stare at me doing the looting without, and and, and being like, yeah, that's totally fine, <laughs> and and like telling me the same, um, and me literally not being banned for it again because if if people keep claiming that you know I'm cheating in some way, some 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 fashion, in an, something that's illegal, then why is it that I'm still here? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Well, th then it gets to the point of, you know, them always saying, oh, well, CCP is not going to ban him like they always do. Okay, well, then why aren't you, like, it It feels like no one's trying to hold CCP accountable. Like, they'll just say, oh, well, you know, CCP didn't do it. And it's like, okay, well, 
you know, why isn't like, why isn't the CSM trying to hold CCP accountable? Like, why isn't like, if you're saying that CCP is letting someone get away with this horrible EULA breach, then fucking hold them, like hold CCP accountable. Don't keep trying to, you know, hold the individual accountable. Like that's, well, holding- well, that, that, but that's not exactly what I'm saying though. What, what I'm saying is maybe the claims are just wrong, you know? <laughs> <laughs> maybe they look at it and go like, oh, didn't do anything wrong. I didn't loot script or one of a million other things I've been accused of doing. Maybe people just need to understand that the, the reason I'm not banned is because I'm not doing the thing that they keep claiming that I'm doing. Yeah, you know? and, yeah and that that's the thing too. Like, I guess from, from my point of view, it's like, okay, if you're, like, if you're sure he's doing something and you've got proof and you show it to CCP and CCP is not banning him, then there's only two options. Either he's not actually doing the thing that you're accusing him of, or it's something wrong on CCP's end. And I don't think there's something wrong on CCP's end. See, you've mentioned the loot scripting, uh, sure. the accusations there. I, I haven't heard you say the three letters yet. I know there's so much. There's only so much you want to talk about now until you get the the chance. To the I, I, I don't. Table. I don't want to talk about that at all until the. I'm. I'm still. I'm. I am legitimately, excitedly, waiting for Minton to to post his part three. The thing about it is that I have very high suspicions that he's not going to post it because you. The only thing that he can talk about in that post, would be burning bridges on his own. So I don't think he's going to do it. At this point, he's like, it's like a mob informant that's gone way too fucking far, right? Like, he begins telling on his own his own side of the uh, the street gang. I, I think he should have stopped with part one. I think part, part one had a bunch of quote-unquote damning evidence. Uh, everyone is perfectly happy to throw one individual under the bus for these things. I don't think everyone's really happy when the the conspiracies begin to encroach on their domains. I think that that's when you go from being like, okay, yeah, you're a whistleblower to, oh, okay, no, you're the guy who we need to make disappear now. Uh, and I think Minton may have may have crossed that line a little bit. Have you ever heard Hilmar talk about RMT, by the way? Not I've heard. I know of. I've had. I've heard Hilmar talk in a relatively recent interview a couple of years ago about RMT. And it's not uh, it's not the way that it would be characterized by the player base. He doesn't say anything about how bad it is for the game. He doesn't say anything about that. He talks about one individual who paid their university tuition with a bunch of money that he scammed and stole off of, I don't know, some very large group of people. I'm not entirely sure who he's referencing in that, in that whole anecdote. Could it have been the, uh, the what's it called, uh, Phaser Inc., the Ponzi scheme? Potentially. And so this individual quit the game, like RMT'd at all, and paid for his university tuition. And this is... Hilmar, in Hilmar's own words, this is the context is spun positively towards this. So I don't know if everyone is on the same page with this as uh, as the player bases at CCP. I, I don't know that for sure. I know that lots of devs have come out and spoken out about that. However, I mean, a lot of stuff happens in this game, and I I don't know. I've heard many many stories. We'll say, uh, I think that RMT is much more prevalent than you would think. And I think that it would affect a very large group of people, as we've seen currently on Reddit, not just Cable's whole thing, but I think Fire recently got a bunch of uh, Minton-esque shit thrown their way as well. Um, I don't know, man. It's it's a really super touchy subject. Do I support RMT? No. Do I think it's bad for the game? Not really. It's debatable. Does it hurt the game? Maybe, yeah. When people are just doing things for money all day versus, you know, playing things casually. I can see how that hurts the game. But... Uh, I don't know if CCP is on the same page as this as the player bases. I'll just be I'll just put it at that. I think the perspective needs to be a little bit more balanced than some of the knee jerk reaction that comes out of Reddit, which is the usual uh, Re the, something the, something. Yeah, the the usual the usual truth. However, uh, from a personal standpoint, I, I do think it's bad for the game and i think it's overall it's it, moreover i think it's directly dishonest for ccp to comment on it it's very tricky i think people need to have a respect for some of the legal grounds that have to do with money generated or conducted 
as part of online transactions in the context of games. There's a fascinating case study with the company Linden Labs and their game Second Life dating back to the mid early 2000s, so 2005, oh 2006. Lord, that's a meme I haven't heard in a long yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> that is, that is for, for people who are more into understanding some of the context behind how companies feel about money being transacted around their game and, uh, you know, concepts like RMT. You, you got to understand some of the history here and what happens on all sides of the fence to the game companies, to plaintiffs or defendants in certain kinds of suits, and to governments down to talking like international law here and then things like that uh, when, when money is at stake. Uh, so th there, there's there's a whole lot of richness and depth to the content or the uh, context of RMT. But I think what we're all eager for is to see Will Mitten put down this third run. And I'm, I'm actually going to say I, I do agree with you, Loki. You should have stopped at part one. I think part one is, is interesting. I really can't wait to hear what Cable's final response to part one is. H how will you indemnify against the recording of the charges, but I respect your your wish to withhold that until you put the Trump card out. But as he got into part two, as he goes into part three, uh, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out because I think there's also just a certain context of uh, perceived fairness here and of a, let's call it an in-game morale. So I want to alleviate, I, I, I want to relieve the burden here for a moment of the moral discussion of RMT and how one man can totally ruin a 18 year old game which, which seems to be the extreme effect certain people are taking. Or the other side that, well, it's, it's no big deal even if he was, which I think both sides are equally wrong. I want to simply mention that there's an in-game morale effect because right now we are at a probably the most contentious point in EVE history since Incursus. Right, since, since 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 the Monocle affair, we're at a very high state of player angst. We saw lowest numbers uh, down to a 16k player dip. We have seen the biggest decline coming into the, uh, the the Northern Hemisphere winter that we've ever seen in CCP's history. Yep. And all of these things, like, man, this is a bad time for it, or depending on your perspective, I mean, a good time it was, for it. It was kind of a predictable thing, wasn't it? Like, the whole game industry practically got, like, a Hail Mary victory when COVID hit. Of, like, you can do whatever the fuck you want, even though it's terrible, and all the numbers will still go, oh, well, we're doing great, because we have more people on this these things. We have lots of players, and everyone's active, because it, the whole world will shut the fuck down, right? Um, during a summer, even. Um, and then winter came, which gave us another, you know, generic rise in number of players because it's winter and it's cold and people don't really want to go outside in the cold and all that shit, which is, you know, normal highs of, of, of video games in general. Um, <clears throat> and then now, as we got, we passed summer, we saw the normal dip. But now we're seeing, like we're literally coming back towards you know lockdowns and stuff to an extent at least with within areas of europe but the numbers aren't coming back so that like fake rise that we saw in, in player amounts has subsided and now the the, the bill is due you know what i mean yeah I, to my to my knowledge i was i was probably one of the first people because I was doing the, the Trash Talk Tuesday uh, show around this time when uh, when all this was going on, and I was one of the first people to speak out about about this. And like CCP devs were actually listening to the stream, like they were in they were in the you know they were in the stream uh, chat and all that. I laid out very clearly what I thought was going to happen, <laughs> and it had something to do like you guys are going to butt fuck the economy. Uh, it's not really going to fix anything. People are going to be really mad. They're going to express their anger in uh, canceling all of their subscriptions. And yeah, those subscriptions may have some half-life, but eventually uh, they come to an end. And when that happens, you guys are going to panic. You guys have, will have realized that you've let this go on way too fucking long. And then we're going to be back to some kind of ice cream version of things where you need to convince everybody to get back playing the fucking game. And you have absolutely no credibility uh, 
in any regard to get them to do that because you've broken their trust. And so you're going to come out with some crazy thing like Oracles and skill injectors. And it's going to be another four years of this, you know, it's printing shit again. And this is, this seems to be the general up and down thing that CCP are great at doing. It's everything is done in extremes. Nothing is done ever in uh, any kind of uh, minuscule and balanced kind of way. They say they're balancing the game, but they just take a, a fucking nerf bat to anything they touch. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's and either put rockets on it or dropkick it. Pretty much. And I mean, were there, like, even just, like, let's, can we just think about the mental gymnastics regarding the capital production thing, which, again, like, like a year and a half ago, I, I swear to God, I was on Trash Talk Tuesday. It might have been, like, episode 25 or 26 or something like that. And, and I'm laying out, like, you're making things really expensive. No one's going to want to buy these things and use them, so no one's going to lose them. Hence, there's no demand. And if there's no demand, the builders can't build. And if the builders can't build, then the crabs can't crab. And so you're killing like a massive part of your fucking game right off the bat, just just from an activity standpoint. These people all have to find new things to do because this is their gameplay. This is the thing that they're doing. The crabs are crabbing to supply people with minerals so that you can build these things, right? And if nobody wants to buy them, that like you just shot your economy in the face. Like the economy by definition is what? Just money changing hands at a certain rate, right? The faster it changes hands, the stronger your economy seems to be. That's generally how things work. So what you'd want to do is try to increase spending, try to increase activity, increase the incentives to go out and, and get shit blown up, not decrease them by making everything super expensive. Anyway, I'll stop my rant now, but uh, it's just smash my head on the desk, dude. Face, meat, palm. I'm, I'm waiting for another six months before somebody gets fired and then, uh, or whatever, something bad happens. And then, uh, can we make things, can we things like start a betting pool change. on that? Or will we get banned yeah, the from the game because that, we were gambling? The, the CCP dead, <laughs> the dead pool. illegal gambling. Uh, <laughs> the, can, can, can make, it can make a, can, it can make like a, a, a series of like, uh, posters, one of posters and then just put X's on them as, as they fall down. That is an, an unfortunate reality, and I and I think you're right about the overall state of the meta and the swing, and that's that's one of the really unpleasurable parts of dealing with CCP is that there tends to be a violent reaction to everything in one way or another. Like you said, rockets on it or, or drop kick it. I, I've said a billion times, small iterative changes need to happen, and we just don't see that coming out from what they're evidencing so far is that what's going to begin this next quadrant. So may, maybe there'll be a little bit more attentiveness. And, and I think that th they need to take a better tone from how they're going to instate gameplay changes and, and take more along the lines as they've done with quality of life or uh, art well, team and art production and do things in smaller sets so that we can take them in isolation. I feel like that that's kind of the that right there it's one of the sentiments that at least I find to be wrong, though, because CCP shouldn't be making, like, making new gameplay or anything. It, they should be giving the players the opportunity to create their own gameplay. And that's what they kind of stepped away from in, like, what was that, like, 2014 or 15 and afterwards? They just stopped letting players have the opportunities to do whatever they wanted. They just started going like, oh, we want you to play this new Triglavian event that we made, or we want you to do this new, you know, whatever event that we made for you. Or like, you know, um, Epistle Space. What? And then they're confused that people are getting frustrated because it, it, it it's a case of like, okay, we complete it, but then you want us to do it five million more times, you know? We're in a state of the game where the player created content the player created play styles you're talking about aren't conducive where there are restrained options so i do want to see ccp taking efforts and initiating changes uh some of that quite frankly to try to uh unseed some of the damage that they've instituted with previous changes we can't fix it you can't undo scarcity you can't undo uh the the, the previous a uh, wild ride of insane Oracle isk printing and other kinds of isk printing that has gone on and still goes on. 
you can't fix his damages, but you can change the trend and you can open up the opportunity. That's why I spoke about the smaller iterative changes. I'm not looking for CCP to give me an activity to do in EVE. I feel there's enough activities to do in EVE. I, I, and I'm not saying there shouldn't be anything new added to the game. There shouldn't be any new uh, events or whatever. I'm fine with the events. I'm fine with his activities. They're all sources of uh, play. What I don't want is I don't want massive swinging changes to the economy and to the mechanics, the, the fundamental aspects of EVE, just to create a sense of newness. And that's the danger I see coming out with these quadrant with the quadrant system as a whole. That's the danger I see coming out now with this promise to end scarcity and a prosperity quadrant and all of that. So while I agree with you that CCP's job should be to foster the environment, the sandbox where players create the play style, you can't expect players to be able to uh, convincingly create a play style in a game where Eve is swinging or where CCP is swinging around and making changes that shut down play style after play style, group after group, and system after system. Yeah, I well, mean, the benefit very... of N plus one. Yeah, it's very difficult <laughs> for me to go out and get like a recreational fight, right? Nowadays, when everything is so fucking expensive, like. You know, we can go and take some chances, uh, fly by the seat of our pants a little bit, maybe end up in a bad situation. And if I lose, I don't know, like 50 serbs, like how much is that? That's a lot of this, man. It's a lot of this that people have to grind for again, right? Like it's it's really difficult for content creators to go out and create content when the consequences are so high, right? If I want to drop caps, like we dropped caps on a group uh, the other day, which is, yeah, something classically like null blocks like to do, right? Just drop some caps on some people casually. Mm -hmm. I mean, the consequences of losing a single carrier or a group of carriers or a group of carriers with a couple of facts, it's fucking huge. Just literally just the volume of minerals you need to replace that. Is huge, but also you know the time, the the effort, the like the money. It's a huge more morale fucking destroyer. So people are less likely to go out and do things, and if people are less likely to go out and do things, it creates a scenario where like one little Fortizar thing sparks this giant fucking ignition, right? But like like we covered earlier, but I mean it's just going to going to basically end with people just really not logging in that much anymore. So like I suggest they fix their fucking shit like real fucking quick because things are not progressing in a good direction at all and it's going to get worse. And this is coming from a guy, by the way, who's trying to build an alliance and all this and successfully doing so somehow uh, against uh, <laughs> against all odds. But uh, holy fuck, man, make it harder. Yeah, I don't I could just being blunt, I don't think it's a great time to be trying to build a new alliance, especially an alliance with a, a goal of power projection like you mentioned before. Not to discourage you from uh, giving the effort, because, you know, uh, bless, I'm glad somebody's out there trying, but this might be some one of the worst times in history to give this, because everyone's savvy enough to know how to act upon power projection and capitalize upon an alliance uh, that's trying to establish, while also the the game is not really uh, well designed for it. So you talked about dropping caps, and of course, the, the gut reaction. Of many people, and even to a certain extent, my own gut reaction is, well, good, it should hurt to lose a cap, and I'm all for hurting to lose a cap. The problem is that there's a there's a missing element there. Everything in you should be risk versus reward. And I think, you know, you, you mentioned dro casual dropping of caps. Um, the upside is lower than it's ever been. So it'd be one thing if we said, hey, the downside of losing a cap is higher than it's been for ages, which is true. But if we said, hey, the upside of a cat of dropping caps and getting the frags is higher than it's been for ages, that would be a nice balance. But that's not something we can say. What 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 is the upside of conducting risky warfare in Eve right now? I mean, how much risky warfare have you seen since the the Del War? N not much. And I mean, those that that war, to be perfectly honest, that war started before all this shit happened, right? Like, yes. To be fair, so that 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 genie was out of the bottle, and it's not like Panfam and or Pappy rather was going to just you know walk away from that after they had established their beachhead and they were they were making progress and all this stuff. Um, so they were kind of pot committed. Uh, you could see that, like you know, once the TTT money kind of dried up, I mean, test immediately was was done. They pulled out, uh, and Pappy was essentially at that point, you know, retreating. Because like it seemed like they apparently didn't have any money for SRP, or so was said from the other side. The fact that that like uh, the goons were able to even say that and that even make any sense, 
uh, or yeah. even be a possibility is fucking insane, considering, look at the years of crabbing that these groups had, right? So, like, where did all that ISCO? And then secondly, where did that ISCO, like, did it go into SRP for ships? And, and if so, I mean, that, that must have been one hell of a bloody year. I mean, that's rough, man. If you can't even engage in warfare anymore, where three quarters of the gang go, gangs up on one group, and that and that gang can't make it happen because of economic restraints, that's crazy. Yeah, that's it's a telling sign. And while there is a lot of celebration, I think around that, like yeah, you know, a lot of celebration around the upheaval around TTT itself, and around hey, that this shouldn't be a way that uh, power can be controlled and 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 legacy powers can be held on to. There's always this missing element I see from the arguments. There's always a missing nuance. Everything that makes a game fun is actually a risk, can come down to a risk and reward factor. Fundamental game theory, right? You're going beyond games. So talking the the topic of game theory, everything is about a risk versus reward and a mechanism where you perceive an enjoyment because you took an investment. But there is no risk anymore because we got asset safety, boy. And that's the problem is that there's two there there's two negative poles, two negative forces CCP has exerted upon the game in the past five years especially. One is risk mitigation and the other is economy swinging. Forced or we'll say economy interference. And that economy interference is coming in all kinds of ways. Started you know, in this five year period, I'm not gonna say an Eve history of world, but in this five year period started with the the, 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 the uh boost to the capabilities of what Rourke's could exert onto a field with very little direct investment uh of attention, especially. This is what led to people multi boxing ten, twenty Rourke's and uh what 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 uh con- concluded with someone's with a certain person saying solo moon mining is not a god given right so we ended up in the situation that was self created from there and then we saw a, a an attempt to balance that with scarcity which really was pulling a different lever instead of addressing the lever that had been pulled in the first place it was it was making a different interference so this was a theory that you can fix a broken economy by interfering with it in a fundamentally different way than it was originally interfered with. A, a, a fix by creating newness. And now we're into this next section, which this is where the angst is coming from. We're seeing now a third wave of this prosperity to fix that, but we're clearly seeing that different levers are being pulled, different mechanisms are being introduced to try to address what scarcity brought to the table. Instead of going back and iterating on any of these changes, we just see three totally different sets of changes and what we see then is that there is a lack of risk in certain activities where the player base has clearly indicated uh in different ways that they they would like to see more risk that that there is a a a pretty definable consensus there should be more risk and we can talk about things there like asset safety we can talk about things like uh certain high sec activities like abyssal running and, and some of these activities and then there's other aspects where the risk is very high and the the player base has been mostly pretty vocal about the fact that the uh, risk is high, but the reward base isn't meaningfully present. Capital warfare being a great example of that. What I think is interesting is that most of the vocal and informed base who has, has a little bit of wisdom behind the game. So there's some years under their belt uh, playing and have also spent some time thinking, not just you know logging on, but actually thinking and, and being passionately involved in creation of content in the game, whether that be from creating alliances or uh, participating in efforts or coordinating major things, uh, a, a lot of them are, aren't really calling for, hey, this is too risky, but rather this reward is too imbalanced. And I think that's the part that CCP needs to hear, is that we're not looking for an entrance into the game to soften blows. We're looking at something that makes all those punches and makes all that damage you take worth it. Because the classic thing that drew most people to Eve, and certainly drew me to Eve, was that you suffer more in this game than I think just about any game I've ever played. Mm -hmm. But that upside feels so good because of it, because it has a balance. When I lost my first uh, Care Bear ratting ship to some random-ass ganker, 
getting the shakes because like how the hell am I going to come up with 25 million esque to replace that sweet sweet omen fit or whatever the hell it was but then my first PvP kill and feeling that victory and feeling that capability on the field and knowing that I was putting that risk that projecting that risk onto the field to get that reward is what people are looking for out of this game. If we want if we want the softened blows of nothing really matters and you just respawn and go off and go run headlong into the same thing you were doing, we can pick game A, B, C, D, all, all the way up to thousands of games. I think the general consensus is that people do want to see the high risk. They do want to see the investment in the game. They're willing to create that investment. And as Cable, you said before, they're willing to uh, make a play style around it. But CCP has to get out of the way for that to happen, and to, part of getting out of the way is making changes. I mean, sure, they need to make changes. They just need to, to step out of this, like, approach that almost, or at least uh, what I'm experiencing, a large amount of game developers is that they're, they're creating a game for someone to complete. You know what I mean? Like they're they're mm. they're creating the the content. Like here is our content for you to play. You know what I mean? Instead of here is a is a thing. Figure out how to use it and create your own goddamn content. You know what I mean? Like we used to That's... because C C C P should give us tools to create content ourselves and not give us content to complete. That's what I was trying to say. That's an interesting statement. So let's think that through for a minute. What was the last enduring new activity that CCP introduced to Eve? And by enduring, what I mean is this: we can't talk about like an event activity. So you have to talk about something that ends. What was the last thing that CCP introduced to the game that actually introduced a new way to play the game in an enduring fashion? You could do it when it started, and you can still do it right now. Abyssal PvE, probably. Abyssal Zites, for instance. Like instance, yeah, it's instance PvE. Sounds about right. So that, P P but Puchman it doesn't... and Abyssals, I think, are the, the most recent I can think of. Sure. Yeah. Sure. But Poshman creates, sure, I guess Poshman creates a little bit of, 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 of PV or content pl between players, but Abyssal Sites doesn't create any level of real like content between players. That is, Can we not agree on that? No, no I, I actually, I will agree with you there. Uh, I think Abyssals are actually my least favorite thing added to the entire game. And that might be a very controversial opinion uh, and something that gets me a lot of hate. Um, and it has gotten me a lot of hate in the past. But the reason that I hate them is because it does something to the game that previously, from my personal knowledge, I, I, I can't think of another example where this has happened. And that's gated content where you can mitigate pve risk by not introducing a pvp element so you about like uh so, so chat talking about observatory flashpoints and potchvin definitely a very pve centric activity but there's no way to exclude pvp elements from it now there's certainly ways to mitigate right get your bubbles out uh you know try to bubble those gates up try to have uh the appropriate kind of fleet composition the appropriate kind of uh scouting and approach but i i cannot turn off pvp in that activity wormhole c5 ratting that sort of thing i cannot turn off pvp in that kind of activity oracle mining god knows you can't turn off pvp in that kind of activity abyssals i can turn off pvp and people say, well, that's, that's totally untrue because you exit and you exit at a known point and that's where the PvP happens. That's not the activity. The activity isn't uh, leave the Abyssal Gate. It's run the site. Why is there an activity in EVE, the player-created game, the player-content-created game, why is there this activity with this guaranteed safety element that isn't just about risk mitigation, it's actually about turning off the PvP element to it? I think it's because uh, CCP probably feel that there's a certain portion of the player base that's demanding it, which might be true, right? Like, no, it's definitely true. Like, we're part of we're part of this like older school like Eve is hard. I hate my life thing where this is like this is okay. <laughs> this is what we want to do. The game. I mean, I like being even hurt. What, what Cable's <laughs> literally advocating for is because uh, vestiges of, of really really bad game design in two thousand and three and four and five, right? That where the players had to make their own 13, shit. 14, 15. Sure, sure, sure. But you, we had to make our own shit up 
around the things that were yeah. there because the things that were there were awesome. not really working as intended and it was awesome for sure we are those kinds of players players coming into this game may not be those kinds of players right and we also have to look at that oh yeah because I guess. ccp alienated that whole player base and now they don't want to play the game anymore See, i think I, I i hear you loki and i hear that there is a a different kind of player base. And I think someone in chat had mentioned this too about Perlibus wanting a younger player base and that they have to appeal to a different kind of mindset. Here's my thing. I'm a big advocate that the mindset that is inherent to Eve, the high risk, high reward, PVP non-optional frame, actually appeals to people who don't know it appeals to them yet. They just don't, or they just haven't come to a situation where they can't avoid it. Now anybody, of course, can just turn the game off. They can uninstall. And, you know, the, the, the grand myth of the EVE player is that they get ganked in high sec and it ruins the game for them and they click on install. where a number of years ago, you, there was the infamous presentation by CCP where they said, well, we, we, we looked and we, we found the opposite was true. That, that, people, that, that was not a reason people were quitting the game. I still think it's not a reason people quit the game. I, I, I think most people know going into the game, at least at some level, non-optional PvP is kind of a thing. And uh, they want to experience that kind of risk context. There are definitely people who don't. I, I've talked to such people. I, I've experienced such people who just want total risk mitigation in their game. You know what? There's a thousand other games for them. Uh, Eve will never be WoW. Eve will never be Fortnite. Eve will never be Counter-Strike. It is never going to achieve that kind of success. CCP needs to uh, understand and accept that fact. It will never achieve that kind of success. And uh, I, I'm, I'm being very specific in my word choice there. I don't mean it won't get more success than it has. I don't mean it won't get more money than it has. But it's never going to be the thing that hundreds of millions over a period of different years flock to. It's never going to be the thing that talks about 10 million people online at once or something like that. I don't see that happening with the way that EVE is fundamentally designed without breaking it. That's fine. EVE appeals to something that is very unique and there's not much left in the gaming world quite like it. And I think CCP should capitalize on that and draw that niche in because you are doing two things. You're alienating a niche of players who already want this. The people like uh, me and Cable and Loki, and I know Karama's made some statements about this in the past too. You know, so people like us, uh, sure, old bitter vets, old farts, whatever. But you're also robbing the potential of generating this and perpetuating this niche. This is not some dead thing where it's like, oh, they came from a different era of gaming and it can't ever happen again. This style of playing, this mindset of playing can absolutely experience a renaissance. It just needs a context and content within to do it. And EVE is a perfect backdrop for that if CCP would just stop avoiding it and accept and embrace the idea that this is a different kind of game. PA already has games that avoid and mitigate and turn off PvP. PA needs to make use of this particular asset to draw in and to generate and create demand for a niche kind of play where they have a literal corner on the market. Whatever happened to the EVE Online TV show that was actually supposed to happen? I'm looking at an article right now. September 2nd, 2015, Ridley Scott, his production company, was going to produce an EVE Online TV show. How fucking insane would that be? How many more players could that actually bring to the game? Like that, you know what I mean? I 100% I agree with you, dude. Like, this is not going to be the next League of Legends. It's not instant gratification gameplay, right? 90% of EVE is just waiting around hopefully talking with your friends, uh, playing <laughs> other video games. You know what I mean? Like, hopefully that. Hopefully it's, if you have a good corp culture, if you have a good uh, alliance culture, I think it's very important, then uh, hopefully you're just sitting around waiting for something to happen, playing another game together, or working on some industry thing, or whatever. Working together in some way. But, you know, for the PvPers, we're just waiting for shit to happen. We're waiting for that timer to tick down so that we can get in the fleet, so that we can go out and fight, right? It's a very, very slow, drawn out form of gameplay that has flashes of excitement in it, right? Where hundreds of thousands of US dollars could be put onto a battlefield for Cable to RMT. I'm sorry, to be destroyed, right? Sorry, Cable. Uh, what? And sorry, I, mean, I actually zoned out there for a second. <laughs> did you? Oh, fuck. Okay. I just made an RMT joke. Anyway, 
uh but you know at the end of the day like and that's exciting and that's that's really cool you just have to get people to kind of i don't know man like you kind of just need to get people i guess involved enough people to see it and like hopefully if you're not shooting your economy in the face every 30 seconds like hopefully you know that takes root and i think that generally over the last couple of years have been relatively successful for ccp in terms of uh player base stabilizing people new players coming into the game i think it's been relatively positive uh, compared to how it's been in the past right but then you do something like completely deflating your economy and you overnight create a scenario uh which is identical to the one that we're experiencing in real life where economies are out of control sinking the cost of food right now like personally for me irl is, is fucking insane it's crazy how how much things cost right i'd like to come to a video game and yes where things are hard but that i enjoy and ruthless and ruthless exactly and not and not have to deal with like economic stripes also in this game that are only only created by the devs and not created by the player base if it were part of the sandbox great then i guess that's you know that's the game we're playing some large group decided to destroy the economy by doing some crazy fucking thing right those are those are actually interesting compelling stories and i think it makes for interesting compelling gameplay it doesn't make for interesting compelling gameplay when the devs decide to shoot the economy in the face for fun and see how things go like there are warlords in some countries who chop the heads off of their their victims who have made better economic decisions currently than <laughs> than ccp have been making and that is actually a fact like that's that's like that's where we're at yeah the the economy decisions are what have people certainly upset and it's a, the lack of iteration in economy decisions are what what has provoked all the angst uh without question i, I, I want to actually cycle back to something you said um yeah let's bring dex in for this too this would be good um so i, I want to cycle back to something you said and, and that was about the uh the the ccp or the sorry eve online tv show and ridley scott saying this and that which he said a lot of things over the years and the, ridley scott saying he's going to do a project doesn't mean anything until a production company is actually ready to make his his uh wild offhand <laughs> comment into a reality so we don't know if we'll see that not too long ago uh, my corp had started a movie night and we were just watching different stuff and we started with the classic iconic clear skies and then we actually did a night where we watched all the Eve trailers from the beginning. So we watched the very first Eve trailer uh, for the release. And we watched the trailers for the different patches. And it reminded me that when I got into this game and I saw some of the early trailers, like they actually give me goosebumps to watch. And let's be honest, those trailers, that's not what playing Eve is like 90% of the time, right? Most of it's waiting around. There were, there were no ship spin counts anywhere in those trailers. But what was the affinity? What was the creation between those trailers, which I think most people agree. You know, you talk about the Dominion trailer. You talk about the Revelation series of trailers. You, you talk about some of those. Um, what was the relationship between those and what drew people into the game? Because I think there is a lot of validity to talk about in terms of media creation to draw people in and then get them to experience that niche of the risk versus reward that Eve is all about. I am all for that kind of advertising, all for that kind of media generation, because I don't think it's disingenuous. I think it's just something to grab attention and to set an atmosphere. Sure. I Well, I mean, you know, I, I, I get the whole, you know, the, the Eve movies and stuff don't, don't equate to what gameplay is actually like. I get that. Um, at the same time, it's kind of interesting to kind of make believe you know what i mean like we have one of the biggest rp like communities uh, i think of any game like i don't know a lot about other mmos but i i doubt that their their uh their role-playing community is is anywhere close to like the the degree that that uh that eve online has and i could be wrong about that i don't i don't really know that much about it but like those people were literally like make believing that they're in this universe right they're make believing that they're part of things. They're they're dungeons and dragoning it up in Eve Online. I think that that's actually a pretty interesting thing. And you can kind of make believe that you're in that world that that's something that you want to do. Um, you know, so much as to say like, are am I ever going to get to pilot uh, a frigate through a a giant fight? I mean, yeah, sure. Is it going to be the same as like Eve Valkyrie, for example, which is kind of like what they tried to do? I think make it kind of more like an Eve video. No, not really. But at the same time, like, I don't know, man. I, I, 
I understand that, but how do you sell this kind of gameplay? I mean, what I would do, I guess, is literally just show footage of like BTAC R, show footage of the Battle of Asakai, show footage of of these these iconic battles uh, at M2 TAC. Although that was kind of shit because the other side couldn't <laughs> actually fire back. But you know what I mean, right? Like, like and and do you mean, do you mean show do you mean show Titans that are trying to jump and can't fire their guns? Correct. Is that, yes. that going like, to be the what, whole video? Like, for example, when I started Eve, though, it wasn't the <laughs> Eve videos that drew my attention at all. Um, there were there were Eve videos on my on my YouTube feed like a like a motherfucker. There were like every thirty seconds. I paid no attention to that at all. I didn't even play video games back then. Like, I didn't care. But what actually drew my attention is I watched a video of the Battle of Asakai. And I was like, what is this? What is actually happening? What are those triangles and squares on the fucking screen? What's what's going on? Loki, one of the best trailers that they ever made was, uh, I think it was maybe three, four years ago. You remember the video they done, like, the visual was, like, fleet battles, but the, the soundtrack was um, fleet comms. Everyone arguing and calling out commands and things like that. Have you ever seen that it one? It was real. Yes. The very same. This is Eve. This, this is Eve. This oh, this is that Eve. Was, yeah, that was one of the best trailers. And I, and I think, like, if they ever did invest more time and try to sell it that's like sell the the community aspect of it because yeah the like you guys are right they're, they're not really selling that very well for my money the best advertisement for eve online and i think this is something that they probably should do <clears throat> yeah, like the uh andrew groen is that who it is the the histories of eve Mm -hmm. encyclopedias yeah that's that's eve like that's fucking awesome does it sell game yeah. like no but it does it does actually sell what i think the purpose of the game is again yeah, in my opinion my form of gameplay is it's about power projection like that's what you want to do on a small scale and a large scale like either i take this one system or i kill this one structure or i you know scam this guy out of a bunch of isk or I take over this entire region and enslave its people or push them out or like whatever it is, right? Like that's really what, that's one of the core tenets of EVE Online. And currently I think that CCP is very much at odds with that. It's very difficult right now for us to be able to afford to do those things. And I think that that at the end of the day, these giant Titan fights don't happen without that. Like the, the Battle of Askai brought in a, a crazy amount of people. Mm -hmm. um, just because of its coverage and the things that were going on, the fact that gaming articles were like, oh my god, this is crazy. And, you know, not all those people joined the game uh, or stayed with the game, uh, but I did, right? What, I did. Was, what, what was the final details of that? Uh, like, that was before my time. Uh, so uh, the big red boat jumps at Titan instead of bridging, and then hilarity ensues, and then a giant cat battle happens uh, in low second in the Asakai system. I believe in Black Rays, what, what is it? Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I think that so, was um, yeah. I think that was before my thing. Right, and that's this is this is a precursor to BTAKAR, which then became the the biggest you know Titan fight after that, which again yeah. brought in a whole bunch of people, right? Because it was covered, <clears throat> it was covered in a way that I mean, it was exciting because it was exciting because you have hundreds of thousands of dollars in U.S. in U.S. money, you know, on field, waiting to die, blowing up, exploding, evaporating. That's that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't happen without power projection being possible, unfortunately. And if you make it hard for that to happen, then you just have a less dynamic game. Now, there are other facets of EVE that everyone wants, you know, like small gang and, and the role playing stuff, like we mentioned. High sec mining and industry is, is so that's all some people do, and that's, and that's great. But I think that none of that really happens without, without the power projection at the end of the day. So I don't know, man. I don't know how you advertise the the thing, but um, I, yeah. I, I actually I, I do agree that the uh, publishing some more about like building into the lore what the players have actually done has always been like a fascinating opportunity and an angle for Eve. Uh, I, I do agree with with uh, chat saying that both CCP has had a marketing problem and also that CCP just really underuses its IP because not only is this not only are these these vast untold stories within the lore sets you know we see things get picked up and dropped all the time but there's also these stories that the players have created that could be capitalized on a lot more ccp has a lot of leeway in what they can do with that because of the eula that none of us read when we scrolled through and accepted our accounts and it's not being built upon it's not being capitalized it took a player effort to get the to, to get andrew Grun to create that content in the first place so it, it, I I had mentioned last week that uh, CCP launched universe.eveonline.com, 
which is their new basically lore and uh, meta slash story portal. I have hopes that they will, that maybe we'll get a minor resurgence of interest around building and owning that kind of content out of CCP. But there, there needs to be more focus within CCP about building up the kind of experience that you have as being in the EVE community. I actually agree with those who say that This Is EVE was a very good advertising element. Uh, by the way, if you want to really feel like you, you've truly entered the bitter vet phase, uh, This Is EVE is seven years old. Yeah, I know, right? Seven yeah. years. That's how old that ad is. But it did draw a lot of interest, and those kind of things, you know, the, ha having the comms, I agree. Like, hearing those voices and, and hearing that kind of attitude, it's like, yeah, this is a game I can play, I can, like, make friends, and I can uh, go fly around, and it looks kind of cool. What else do you need? And then draw people into this idea of the risk and reward mechanics, and where they might think, well, I don't like that. Give them the content, give them the context to enjoy it. And stop screwing around with it, and tr stop trying to make it episodic. So... so this Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. Say, so funny story um, that you say about doing more with the Eve IP, uh, that actually gets us into one of the other topics that we had talked about, is the uh, new Eve comic that is being mm, made yes. with, uh, Dark Horse and, with Dark Horse Comics, uh, the Capsuleer Chronicles, which is actually taking place during the Triglavian invasion. So it should be pretty cool. I'm actually pretty excited. I, I, my interest is peaked. I don't know... Hmm. I don't know. Uh, I will link, by the way, Dark Horse's article on this. This is not the first time that Dark Horse has done work with CCP, by the way, and you'll see actually a mention of it in the article that I link, but I will I will drop that in the chat. Yeah, and it's Dark Horse, so it's not exactly amateurs or anything like that. They know their, they know their stuff. Yeah, they. I believe it was Dark Horse Comics, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, that did the whole uh, Vox Machina. Uh, thing from Critical Role, they basically took their uh, D and D campaign and made it into a uh, comic series. Yeah, yeah. Dark Dark Horse. If you're gonna pick a a creative group out there to uh, to to take take your content and push it in a new kind of uh, framework of a comic or in a framework of like a fictional presentation to gar to garner people's interest, Dark Horse is probably the company to pick. They have a lot of credit to doing this and for a lot of different bases of uh, different fictional universes. So I, I, I don't oppose the pick. I don't oppose CCP circling around to do something with them again. We'll see how uh, genuinely it's carried out and if it actually becomes something rather than just, well, here's some comics, you enjoy those, and off we go and to do something totally different. Hello, by the way, guys. Nice to uh, see you all again now. I thought it would come along and be incredibly bitter towards my new replacement co-host. Also, um, what have you been talking about? I only caught the, the tail end of the conversation in terms of um, the power projection that Loki was talking about. What you guys have been... What's been the major topics? Well, talking I mean, about uh, me building a new alliance, the big fight that, uh, that RC just had. We had Cable come uh, on. All right. Did he go over too much of his RMTing? Yeah, I mean, he 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 doesn't want to play the he doesn't want to play the Trump card yet. So Cable supposedly right. has a. For those of you who missed it earlier in the stream, Cable Uda was on the stream. Uh, one of the maybe the one of the least popular people in Eve right now because of uh, all the stuff that is broken on Reddit. He believes that he has the counter response to everything Mitten has claimed so far. But he is holding that back for Minton to post his third and final segment, which he says will shoot himself in the foot. We'll see what happens. Uh, but that, that, is, that is Cable's approach. And his quote was that he did not do anything wrong, but he's not willing to go okay. into the details around the RMT oh. until that happens. Okay, so just... but why does he have to do it in parts? Like, why can't he just fucking post it? <coughs> like, why do we have which, to wait? Which one, Cable or Minton? Because I can tell you why Minton has to post it in parts. Minton. Or... Pageantry, dude. <laughs> Fucking pageantry. Have you have you have you ever talked to Mitten before, sir? I've spoken to Mitten before, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It just pageantry. seems kind of dumb. Like if you're, 
I, I don't know. Maybe maybe I just don't understand the whole like allure of you know trying to you know make this big drama happen when honestly it's just something that hey send it all to CCP give us all at once because if it is happening and it's really that bad like I, I feel like waiting to get the truth out there is it, it's kind of shady. That's been, it's the, like, that's been the backlash, right? That's been the backlash. It's that if there actually is something uh, that that needs to get fixed because you know there's there's evidence and shit like that, then that should be submitted to CCP. It's CCP's job to do this. It's not players' jobs to do this. Let's be very clear about that. This is not mm -hmm. Minton's game. Uh, I understand he may be passionate about this particular subject, but it also seems like he may have vested interests in the outcome of this particular case. So. I don't know, man. Well, yeah. uh, you you called him the Satio King, by the way. You called Cable the Satio King. Can I just say that the oh, man this this has so many like connections to Tiger King in ways that I'm not even comfortable with. Like, which one of these people was Carol Baskin? I want to know because like this is something that not a lot of people knew was actually happening in the world of Eve Online. A bunch of money is being made and exchanged. A bunch of people are backstabbing each other, and now it's blown up, and it's been basically kind of like thrown on the stage for everyone to witness. Right? It's it's very interesting. Well, I mean, it. I don't know. It just seems all like kind of sus. Like the the because the way I think about it is like Mitten doing this like in completely like this. This basically makes all of the groups who work with Cable all of a sudden now. You know they're the bad guys and there seemed to be a lot of that especially when cable tried to go on this crusade and tried to you know get other groups to help him in this crusade because those groups quote unquote helped cable like there seems to be a lot of eve political shit that's i'll, I'll say I'll, 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 I'll say I, i'm i'm skeptical of what cable has in response or what what he's going to bring i i i'm still susp i share my own trove of suspicions about it uh i don't have any solid evidence or anything to contribute to, so that, you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna add fuel to this crusade fire but i'll say around the topic of crusades it's never a good idea just i'm gonna put that blanketly out there creating a crusade against a person or a group within eve because of something that the game developers should be addressing is never a good idea so well, i want to be this has a lot of, this has a lot of like cancel culture shit like ties to it right like if you actually look at it right cable it really bad. Does. It cable really bad culture, look right? i have proof cable bad uh cancel cable let's go guys everybody cancel cable that's why we need to do it in multiple parts and get everybody on your side the, the problem with this is that you've you've essentially i mean cable works with a lot of groups like there are deals that are made between groups in this game with Cable. A lot of the groups have made deals with Cable. Are they actively involved in RMT? No. They're playing the fucking game. This yeah. is a sandbox. It's a sandbox. But when it's... you go on this crusade and you say Cable's bad and therefore anyone who associates with Cable is also bad, like, holy shit. Holy shit. So what he wanted to do was everyone to denounce Cable. Minton, you're right. You're the, you're the good guy here and Cable's the bad guy. But in reality, you players are not like the rest of society, what? right? We're generally a pretty smart demographic of people. And we're able to look through the bullshit and say, look at buddy, you have a massive vested interest in all of this shit. How could we even trust that like that that's actually his voice? Can you trust that that's actually his voice? I don't know. I, I, I mean, also... Anthony Bourdain narrates his own fucking uh, documentary about his death, right? Like, was that his voice? No, it's not his voice. Like, it's a computer-generated voice. So CCP can only do so much, right? There has to be actual evidence to to bring, you know, to bring people to justice if that's what you're into. It's much better left to CCP to handle, and it shouldn't be left to the players. Well, and it's kind of interesting because uh, at first glance, when you know someone who doesn't have any like really hasn't been looking into the situation, um, what I got was that okay. Uh, here's this PL dude with this PL group that's trying to run Sotios. Uh, Cable makes that difficult and taxes them. And then they start this crusade and start targeting, you know, groups like in it and various other Imperium groups for helping Cable. Right. The Keep fact in mind, it's not a, it's not right a good, not a good a look. War. The fact yeah. that one player is able to, to monopolize uh, that particular mechanic uh, set 
and that particular form of gameplay is obviously something that CCP should be addressing. And that's what the conversation should actually be about. Uh, but if you did that, then that means that Minton does, also doesn't have uh, X amount of like whatever money making uh, capabilities, because then everybody could do this one particular thing, right? Like the reason, the reason that uh, Cable can hold a gun to people's heads is because of the way that the site escalates, right? So if you know how to trigger a site one way or the other, uh, bad things can happen. And so if CCP were to just make a very simple change, I think that a lot of this drama just immediately goes away. What, in, in terms of monopolized, do you mean the monopolization of cable in terms of the tutorials, you mean? The, well, the why, do you think, so why do you think that one player is able to tell all the null blocks what to do? Why do you think that that is? Does that make any sense to you? Like it doesn't make any sense, right? Like, well, how is cable? No. Like, how how is cable forcing all of these groups to do business with them? If that's if that's the narrative that you want to go with, right? Like, if that's the case, then there's obviously some mechanics issues that probably need to be investigated. I would assume, right? Would, Again, this is CCP's mm, job. This isn't no, Minton's I, job. That's not. I don't believe that's entirely me, me, like based on mechanics. That's the responsibility of certain individuals for listing in the first place, because I believe. And from that, I'm purely going by um, what people, uh, what I've listened to and what people have said and things like that. I believe that there was certain threats and, and promises. And this is purely in the context of the game. This is not, obviously, to be clear, to draw that line between a video game and real life. There was, there was threats and promises made by either Cable or people associated with them that if you don't do this, this will happen to you. So... That's. I don't believe that the the mechanics of the game are to blame for the monopolization. It's just I believe, in terms of being responsible, I, I think it's more the people in charge of fleets or or things like that. It's what I'm what I'm getting at, Loki. Is it's more a case of the people that listen to them have caused this monopolization and. But they don't have to listen to them. Why would well, so why would why would some of the most ruthless people in Eve Online, like historically the most ruthless, give a shit what one person thinks and say, yes. okay, here's a cut of our thing. Thank you very much, Mr. Cable. Why do you think that that would happen? There's obviously some kind of issue that needs to be investigated. That's all I'm saying. I'm not going to get into any more details than that. I'm just saying that probably if one player is able to just hold everything up, then there's probably some sandbox issues that need to just get slightly tweaked. I'll, I'll take the would... intermediate route to that, though, and say uh, who, who else is trying? Who, who's trying to genuinely dethrone that uh, a kind of intervention and unseat from that single point of power? Because it sounds to me that this is yet another example in EVE, of which there are several, by the way, and there's been several throughout EVE history, where there's just a very limited, very, very small set of people willing to actually go through the trouble of embracing and extending the mechanics, and so they get kind of blamed for the lack of uh, uh, room in that mechanic for new parties to enter and grow, but the, everyone has to put in the same amount of work. And I'm not defending Cable here necessarily, I'm just saying, how explored is this mechanic? Is it necessarily a power vacuum kind of thing politically? Is it a power vacuum thing kind of mechanically? Or is it just people aren't trying? And, like, like, and and on top of that, we have to give Cable credit to a certain degree, yes, because he's been a total bastard and he's got a lot of risk out of it as well. There's well, obviously there's no there's no denying that. We obviously is begrudgingly have to credit him for doing that, being able to to persuade and do what he did and get himself into the position he is. Obviously, he's sacrificed the whole idea of people. Most people in the game hate him, um, but. He's very rich as a result. Would you I mean, lots of people in the game hate lots of people, right? It seems like yeah. the more successful somebody is in the game, the more hatred there is directed yeah. towards those people. Yeah, exactly. And you look but, at, like, would... you look at like, you know, the Matani would be a great example, right? Like, a lot of people like to hate on the Matani, and, like, I'm not going to stop them. That's, but... that's, a, that's a different thing altogether, but because basically he has... The reason he's successful is he has an entire alliance listening to him. You know what I mean? Well, not right. even not just listening to him, but I think he's doing a pretty fucking good job of, of obviously making them successful, right? Like at the end of the day, three quarters of the game went up against the Imperium, and things didn't 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 go so well. Um, yeah. So I mean, yes, 
like and i understand i understand the entire conversation around that so i'm not trying to be like yeah Min mins is my hero or anything like that right that's not what <laughs> we're saying i'm just saying but this is another person who's who's hated probably i mean i don't know i guess cable's probably hated more i don't know it, it's similar though similar no, that's, amounts that's, 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 i have my own answer but it's hard to say you know from a consensus but, standpoint but, but regardless yeah. it doesn't matter like this is one of the things so for for all of the things I support about uh, Matani contempt, there is a certain line that has been crossed more than once where it becomes about a person and not a player, and that's what I was alluding to before when I when I was talking about the crusades are a bad idea. Yes. When absolutely. when you start when you start creating something about an image of an individual person singling them out and saying this is what's wrong with the game, now that's not going to work because all you're doing is you're actually giving CCP a free win there. So you, you have mentioned this before, Loki. If it's happening, if there is this RMT happening, if there is this um, this wrongdoing going on, and Minton has an opportunity to, uh, to 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 prove that out, he also has an opportunity to come on the show, but instead he's going to dodge in Twitch chat. But that's his, that's his God given right. So Minton has an opportunity to prove this out and to give some compelling uh, finalization to the story. Cable has an opportunity to play his trump card that he says that he has and indemnify himself but if it comes down to let's get the hyper focus on this person and the drama around it the rabble rousing and the uninformed mobs the whole time you're giving ccp a pass for fixing what may be fundamentally broken yeah i mean absolutely and that's that's like that's like that to me that is the solution here there's obviously some kind of bottleneck uh for this particular form of activity it happens to be highly lucrative right with i mean yeah there is some like there is some effort that needs to put into to be put into it is but to be perfectly to honest like the amount of work i put into a fleet i mean it's, it's way more work than than and i've killed one of these things like i understand right i i understand the whole conversation around this uh it's it's minimal amounts of fucking work is the risk sure if we lose a bunch of caps trying to kill it, I don't give a fuck. We'll just replace the caps, whatever. But the the upside to actually blowing one of these things up is pretty huge, right? There's the potential to make quite a bit of risk off of off of doing this. So if that's the case, I mean, maybe this needs to be more uh, democratized. Uh, maybe more people should be, you know, maybe it should be easier. Maybe one mechanic where uh, a single group of players is able to hold a gun to the people in the Satio site's head, maybe that needs to get fixed. I don't know. Because there's obviously, there's clearly triggers here, right? Like there's triggers to the site that result in a lot of dead capitals That's... if things go badly. And you can look online. There's a lot of examples. Anyway, I'm not advocating for it either way. I'm just saying that, like, you know, the Crusade portion of this is relatively... Whether it's for the right reasons or not for the right reasons, pretty distasteful. And um, I think that the larger conversation then should be about the mechanics and not so much the individual person uh, engaging in the mechanical gameplay. Um, I was say, did any of you talk about the, the thing going on in Cloud Ring right now, by the way? I meant to mention that. The what, sir? <clears throat> yeah, apologies, my I'm I'm not very well right now, so <laughs> I can't really talk very loud. Um, uh, at the moment, um, initiative seem very committed as to um getting cloud ring back. But um, can anyone enlighten me as to why is that? Like because uh, I believe on one occasion we visited there, and they are they seem to be expert reshippers because during that fight I killed the same guy three times. Um, I, I I can't remember the last time that was possible. This is but, goons goons doing goon things, I think. <laughs> yeah, yes, indeed. But why why did I want it back? I, I'm not familiar with the regional the, the the regions and why and all that. Could you enlighten me? I don't I mean, know. About what I know stuff. of I know very limited amounts of information on this because this is far away from my sphere of like influence or whatever. But I, I, what I believe has happened is I think Triumvirate are down there. Yes. In EUTZ, and basically, uh, in it said, "Nah, we want your stuff. We want your space. Get the fuck out." And then they said no. So um, I think it had something to do with jump bridge utilization, the goons being able to utilize jump bridges, and then the Tri said no or something like that. And then, uh, you know, they've basically tried to glass the region, and there's this ongoing conflict where I believe, from battle reports, looks like Tri is significantly outgunned in most of these fights. Yes, Although, um, I believe putting up a pretty good fight considering the the odds. Yeah, Ella Run, we were outnumbered. Night, what was it? 
Gooden's rage climbed it all, so it was in it, and Gooden's they brought something like six, seven hundred, and we were at three hundred, so we were very much outnumbered, and the escort ended up equal. So Gooden's doing good things, as you said. Um, but it was interesting to see how committed they were, um, because that was three separate fleets they brought. Um, like, and it would have been nice to see those sort of numbers during the war, wouldn't it? Okay, what do you think? <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure it would have been nice to see those kinds of numbers. I guess coming from the goons, I don't know. Uh, I wasn't, I wasn't actually in that uh, in that particular That's conflict, right. but I, I was. Will... No, no, it's okay. But um, I mean, obviously, yeah, it, it does seem like kind of a mini proxy war, I suppose, right? This is this is safe content for the Imperium to engage in. They're encroaching on sort of bull, pan fan blue sentiments kind of groups like adjacent groups we'll say they're like one separation away from from being friendly with pan fam or something like that so it, it's relatively safe content for them to engage with without sparking some kind of massive uh conflict which I'm, i don't know if that's what they, the thing that they want to do right now anyway is mm -hmm. uh yeah i mean it just seems like safe content for them to be engaging in and setting up their you know control over that, and, uh, that top portion left of the map Meanwhile, they're trying to, you know, get the Delve Time unit back up and running. The Delve what unit? The Delve Time unit. What is the Delve Time unit? I'm not uh, sure. However much money they're making. Know. Yeah, I don't understand. Goons make lots of money. That's basically what it is. All right. Is that is this like a, a group of, within the game? Like, no, like... it's... it's So, Goons... Uh, what what they have what they started doing was uh, they started measuring things how much something costs by the Delft time unit and it's uh, how much money someone makes in a certain amount of time. Of course they did. Which was hysterically large. I tell you, nerds nerds with spreadsheets, dude. <laughs> That's yeah. Gotta love it. So like a super is like what like like three hundred Delft time units or something. Something like that. Oh, need to look into this. This sounds interesting. Incredibly stupid as well. Delve time unit. <clears throat> anyway, so uh, do we have anything else that we were uh, going to talk about? So, are you enjoying my my? Are you enjoying my job, Lish? Uh, are you enjoying my job? Is that how you say your name? Your character name, Blish? Ish? Oh, he's actually uh, AFK right now. He's taking care of some. Uh, all right, okay. <laughs> I was just, uh, as I said, I was coming on to be incredibly bitter and, and, and stuff, but he's not here to do that, unfortunately. Um, but have you guys been up to anything interesting in the game at the moment? Currently, I've kind of just been dicking around in high sec. Trying to build my little, uh, my little trade, my little trade post. How about, how about you, Loki? Anything exciting? Uh, you know, just building an alliance and uh, against all, all against all odds. I mean, quietly rebuilding an alliance. Well, uh, I left Capital Fusion to my heartbreak, and uh, I'm now a member of uh, NC Dot. Oh, which group so, in NC? Which corp in NC are you in? Um, blank space. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, Rom is Rom is a, a good guy. I like Rom a lot. I was in NC yeah. for quite a long time, so. Yeah, a lot of the CapF guys joined, so I just wanted to play with my my guys. You know how it is. You you still want to continue playing with your mates, you know? So I, I tried to play with my guys, but then I I didn't meet the uh, requirements to uh, stay in the corp. Now I'm a free agent. Free uh, agent. Uh -oh. Having nothing to do, of course, with E Vegas, but I don't think we have to go there. Um, Dax, are you like a are you like a a budding Taylor Swift fan or something? Is that why you joined the corp? Or? Well, that's always the bonus, really, isn't it? Uh, is there is is they're laden with images of Taylor Swift, and you you would be wrong not to be a fan, you know? Right. So for people who don't know, Blank Space's ticker is Taylor, right? Because Rob apparently just loves. Loves loves the piss out of uh, Taylor Swift, so there you go. Oh, oh yeah, there, there, there is clearly something wrong with you if you don't like Taylor Swift. 
absolutely and also yes. trying not to get sued by taylor swift so yeah great great artist check her out she's on <laughs> she's on spotify and on our discord yeah totally totally yes i'm, I'm sure i'm sure that my opinion of taylor swift uh, totally holds any kind of light and candle on, on her uh, her overall uh, record sale uh, population oh. actually that being said like it must be a bitch right now to i don't even know how do you make money as an artist like i guess you just tour yeah. There's, is there not like a lot of money in the whole Spotify thing? There's like royalty in it or something. Yeah, I suppose. I suppose there must be because, like, Rogan did like a hundred million dollar thing or something. So yeah, it must be must be some money in that uh, that Spotify internet stuff. Anyway, oh, it's massively off topic, but I do have a question for you. Um, I re I recently rejoined Bomber's Bar, much to my fucking demise. Um, but what is the general opinion from the null blocks these days, or like from what I don't know? I'm I, I'm curious now because I had a very different reputation the last time I was part of it as an FC. Um, do you have what, much to say about that? Um, I don't know. I think that it's relatively fun. No, in terms third... like obviously with it being MPS idols, a lot of new guys there, but it's more a case of. Is it much of an issue? Because, like, at Bomber's Bar, whenever it was at its kind of peak, there was entire fucking corporations just docking up at the sheer sight of a pine. Uh, and obviously that's not the case anymore. So, like, I'm curious to find out people's kind of feedback on that. Is it actually much of a problem these days? Or any idea? Mm, I don't know. I think, like, we're all in, like, the Bomber Bar Discord. So, I mean... It's relatively yeah. it's relatively easy to figure out, you know, if bad things are coming your way or they're not. So yeah, sometimes you'll get a ping to say like, you know, Bombers Bar may be in the area, especially if they do a fleet out of like Amar, for example, right? Then I know, oh, okay, probably going to be close. So you know, maybe dock up your shit for a bit and you know, just keep an eye out, whatever. No big yeah. deal. I don't see it as being that big of a, a thing. Yeah, um, I think that it's great. It's great. It's a great way to to get your guys just involved, especially newer players, right? Involved in a little bit of content. Yeah. So like, I I actually direct some of my guys. Uh, who join, who are like newer players and stuff, I, I direct them towards them because I think that it's just it's just good fun and it's informational to a certain extent. Like It's practice, so why not? Yeah. Um, I was just curious because, like I said, uh, before, um, I, like I was an FC, I think it was two years ago, two or three years ago, uh, and I left. Um, and obviously... You don't expect it to remain exactly the same over that time period. Um, and just going back, obviously, to see how it's kind of transformed and the, the different sort of activities. And I'm just wondering, obviously, we've been through the uh, the the war that no one wants to talk about anymore and, and things like that. I was just curious as to uh, the current kind of status and reputation it has because, you know, you know how it is. We had a lot of, like, at one point we had uh, where... Um, at one point, there was a ping saying bombers bar around and just dock up all your stuff immediately. Um, things like that. It was considered much more of a threat now, but it doesn't appear to be the case anymore, which is unfortunate. Well, I, mean, I think there's still a pretty big threat. Like forty bombers with like uh, with void bombs can can do some serious fucking damage to like a world <laughs> and, and faxes. Yeah. Like I mean, I don't think that the threat has necessarily changed at all. I think maybe maybe from a larger null block perspective, the you know, they've adapted to that kind of stuff and are a little bit better with the counters. Um maybe. Like maybe that's why there isn't quite that that level of thing. Like I said, a lot of people just, you know, have resorted to just having their Discord open and know when those things are happening close to their area. Or they'll have fleet, you know, people like alliance members on those fleets, right? So when things are happening in their area, it's probably pretty possible for them to just be like, yo, like notify some leadership, have the ping sent out. If they do catch somebody, it's somebody who isn't listening to pings. So they kind of deserve it, maybe. By the way, yeah. that's, uh, Isha's back. If you want to uh, throw some shade. All right, yeah, no, I was, I was just, uh, as I said at the beginning, whenever I, I, I joined the chat, I was just um, coming here to be incredibly bitter towards you. Are you, are you currently enjoying my job? Uh, I am my enjoying it. Job? I, I, I'm not Scottish enough to actually have your job or, or take your job, but I am enjoying yeah. co-hosting with Karama. Uh, but I I, I I lack the Scottish credentials to actually replace uh, Dex. Oh, uh, I can't tell a lot of people in this game. I, I continuously wear a kilt whilst playing this game. So obviously, those credentials. If you're brave enough to do that, then feel free. But um, 
so there you go. But that was just one burden. I was I was curious, man. But yeah, so there you go. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's been a great time, and uh, it, it is it is definitely the best. Uh, uh, it's definitely the best shit tier Eve show. Uh, thanks to Minton for those kind words of endorsement. I, th- I think actually, can we maybe uh, can we can we get Redline to maybe make a banner for B two K with that uh, with with that excellent thanks quote. That's... So um, anyway, uh, about Bombers Bar, I, I do want to say I, I don't think the threat's any different. I think there's two th- two things that happen. One, a little bit of fatigue of there's a bunch of people that uh. There's a bunch of people. Bombers Bar and Spectre Fleet aren't the only people doing like these NPSI come out of nowhere and, and get some pews uh, thing anymore. And also that you have uh, you have such frequent content and it's such it's a little bit more well adapted about what to do about uh, bombers coming to grid in terms of response fleet. All the same, I think the danger is about the same. I just think it's a blend mm-hmm. of, for certain activities, people willing to absorb that danger and it not being spoken about as much because the, the danger shift, the risk shift isn't there. And then for other stuff, frankly, not as many things getting fielded. Yeah, I think too, like Kiki's, like the advent of groups basically just going out with Kiki Barras, right? Finding uh, Jove holes and killing uh, Rorks on a large scale. That wasn't really around or really that big of an emphasized play style. Back when bombers bar were, you know, just relentlessly killing works with like 40 bombers or 50 bombers or however many, right? Um, so I think in the advent of that game change, like that became a really big thing for people to do now, right? Like I've I've done many many oh, work, work kill fleets with Kiki's missed, or Kiki's or Dracula. I miss uh, fucking miss those days, Loki. I'm not I'm not gonna lie to you, man. The 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 fear and local of of so many caps and you would wander in with uh, 40 50. Kiki's and you could in the, even in the environment you could feel the you, you could sense the the feeling of inevitability that your your super or your carrier or something like that is going to explode within the next ten minutes. <laughs> it was fantastic, man. But sorry, I interrupted me, Carrier. Yes, yeah, so I just think that maybe maybe there might be some adapted like defense mechanisms that have popped up, you know, in relation to that, which I guess probably in effects like bombers bar not being taken as seriously or you know what i mean like because again like i mentioned like if you get caught after your alliance pings because you're mining i mean you're just you're just that idiot who isn't listening to pings right and no and nobody <laughs> oh. really cares about you as before <laughs> right yeah you 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 right and yeah exactly you weren't on comms or, or whatever right whereas before you just had this this group of spooky bombers rolling around killing everyone's stuff and you know no one knew that this guy that 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 group was even close to them until until you know the worst happened right so i think that that Mm -hmm. that perception has definitely changed a little bit too with the advent of like triglavian ships and 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 kiki's becoming like a very large uh source of content for many many people yeah it's through like i've done like a handful of fleets recently and and as you said, it's like there is that avenue for new guys coming along and stuff. Like that. But I've seen uh, the kind of stark reality of it is they just don't generate that level of numbers because um, there has been, as you said, perhaps people have kind of adapted to that and they'll be looking for some fresh content. So um, I was just, it was just a matter of curiosity more than anything else. It was um, like, Stuff like the the old school fleets, I think very much they've they've had their time as well. The I don't know, we would just go out and kind of go into the the null sick and and go and poke around, and then there's nothing there. We can back in and go to the next one. Um, as as you were saying, there's there's a, a limited amount out there now as a result of obviously the changes. So I think more it's it's a case of trying to create something new and kind right. of fresh. Um, oh, and, and supers and carriers and everything losing, you know, their resists. Also, right, like that's that's a big one because it just becomes really hard to actually save a T1 carrier. It becomes hard to save a riding super if it gets caught, right? It's, it's yeah. Very close. To, I don't want to say it's impossible because it's not impossible, but it's difficult. You have to have a lot of things in place and things go right for you to be able to save those things. So that just leads to people not doing it as much, right, at the end of the day. Um, Obviously, capitals being in space now a little bit more prevalent because of the the new sites that uh, that have kind of come out. But gen- generally, book. yeah, exactly. But generally, I think, uh, you know, the, the good old days, you'd probably you'd probably be 
able to get a lot, a lot more because there's just a lot more out there. And these days, there's probably a lot less. Well, uh, like in terms of what we're seeing, it kind of links back to what I was the the protests uh, the other week there, the stupid protests where I often saw like um, like over time. You obviously have certain betas and playstyles <coughs> um, where they've simply had their day. Um, and a lot of the protests were based on, like, because um, people were, were thinking back towards their grid full of rockles and, and, and all that stuff. That's never going to, you're never going to see that again. And I, But with the protests, I, I think a lot of that is to do with people wanting to see that again. And I don't think that's ever going to happen. Uh, does that make sense? Um, I, I apologise. As I said, I'm not very well, so brain cells are kind of hard to come by today. Yeah, I think <clears> we touched on this early in the show, and you we, you weren't here, but basically, like, we're going through a process right now economically in the game that is not sustainable. People are not going to continue to put up with this stuff again because when your economic you know problems IRL caused by you know like a giant pandemic or something. Uh, it's affecting you IRL and then you get into a game where you have the exact same shit happening in the game. Uh, when that's, when that's kind of the dynamic, I don't think a lot of people are getting the escapism that they're, they would normally be getting from Eve online. They do still get the camaraderie and all that stuff. But generally I think that the people's anger again are being expressed and ending subscriptions, uh, which I think have long lasting <laughs> effects. The subscriptions last a long time, right? So people, you're seeing those effects now. I think it's going to get worse, and it's going to get to a point where I think CCP will let it go too long, and then there's going to be this big backlash with, "Oh shit, we got to do something now, right?" And now they're and then they're going to scramble to try to make things better, and in so doing, I think we're, we'll go back to some variation of castles <laughs> in the sky, oracles and skill injectors, and everyone gets a fucking car and all this stuff, right? Like that's probably where we're at. I mean, that was my prediction from the very beginning with this, because this seems to be the general way that CCP likes to do things. It's very it's very imbalanced in... It's just imbalanced. It's, just, it's not a balanced way of doing anything. You're trying to balance the game with, like, these knee-jerk I, changes that, I mean, are at the end of the I, day, not really even on topic for what it is that you're trying to fix. Like, I, I, like, I felt there was, there was a certain degree of kind of psychology involved as well. Because it was just like the updates and the changes were relentlessly negative, so to a point where it was just kind of it just sucked away your morale towards the game as well. You like it was dying out. It was screaming out for something exciting and positive and a complete change of gameplay. But with the uh, all the the different changes, it just had this negative effect on people. If that made sense. Well, sure. I mean, you had so you had economic changes that happened in the middle of a giant war, right? Yeah. That started before where they, they couldn't really, you know, people couldn't really adjust to this. People were, I guess, the the null blocks were pretty much just adjusting as, as best as they could while trying to win, right? Um, people get back and now it's like time to crab and time to build and time to re restock and all this. And they're like, what the fuck is this shit? Like, <laughs> this, is, this is crazy. Like, is quite, uh... what? Is this really what we've what we've been having to put up with? And if you weren't in that war, by the way, I mean, you've just seen Jita eat absolute shit. Um, some modules are actually hard to find in Jita right now. Like, some things are actually hard to find. I tried to buy, you know, like, I don't know, what was it buying? Like, iHubs? Like, just to get an iHub. And I understand iHubs are hard to transport and all this other stuff. Like, there's a whole bunch of reasons why, like, you know, we should just be making it in-house. But I wanted to buy an iHub. And it's like, try finding a fucking iHub, dude. Like, actually, it's like, oh, there's only, like, three of these in the game available in a market. Cool. Um, there's all kinds of shit that... I mean, it's just it's just really negatively impacted the the market velocity of the game, which is it's not good. That's the that's the opposite of what you want. If you you want stockpiles to disappear, right? Mm -hmm. You need to increase the velocity of the market and then maybe begin to uh, monitor how many resources are actually flowing in, right? And begin to gradually make changes that actually make sense. I th I I would think that's how I would go about doing something, not like shooting the entire fucking economy in the face changing everything and saying oh yeah this is going to totally work guys because i i don't think those stockpiles are gone 
people just stopped using capital ships because they're like impossible to replace now, right? Replace. We're basically we're just still cruising on old stockpiles. So maybe if if they give we give it do another two years of this, um, maybe the total deflation of the Eve economy might result in those said stockpiles actually being depleted because the players there have no choice. Uh, but largely, I think it'll be they go away because everyone is unsubscribed from the game. So uh, we might want to do something to fix that because I, I don't see this like the, the concurrent player numbers are not are not trending in a positive way. Uh, and I don't think they're going to continue to trend in a positive way. So I think it's time that we like fix some shit and try to it's, maybe it's... maybe maybe admit that we might have been a little misguided and then maybe just make some changes that I don't know. Listen to some Eve players that have degrees in economics yeah. like that would be, be a good start. Uh, how dare you suggest such a. A, a radical change in attitude. <laughs> like, I do understand, too, though, like, CCP's position, right? Like, you don't have devs that have been at the game for 18 years. Like, you have some, maybe. But for the yeah. most part, you probably don't, right? There's there's, there's overturn, or turnover, sorry, and that this is part of reality, right? It's a, it's a video game company, so there's going to be people who come, and there's going to be people who go. Uh, and they are dealing with players, some of whom have actually been playing for, for 18 years. Yeah. Now, right? And so... The thing is, though, is that at a certain point, you kind of have to, I mean, you have to go with somebody who actually knows what the fuck it is that they're talking about. And, like, the fact that, that CCP had an economist at one point for the game probably was the best move. And, you know, that person moved on. Cool. But, like, maybe take steps to get another one. And, you know, and I understand that it's a very large and complicated thing. And it's going to take years for that person, or at least months, of analyzing and going through everything and looking at everything to, to even come up with some kind of idea of how this game actually fucking works, right? It, it also, there's also the, the continual question of what someone is going to bring to a balance. Just b background knowledge isn't enough. I'm going to give an example with another game that hired someone who uh, had a, I won't even name the game or name the person because it's not really about people here, uh, but they, they hired someone with a degree in psychology to balance the fairness and the perceived toxicity in their game. And I think most players of that game, I don't play the game myself, but I was watching from the outside in from an interest in the community, and most of the players of the game readily agreed that did nothing to quote unquote solve a toxicity problem because the person is trying to bring elements that are are great and uh, for a textbook study and great for an academic treatise of online gaming but nothing effective to an actual uh, game experience standpoint now eve definitely is a very complex economy arguably the most complicated uh, implemented in any game today any computer game today so i i, I am all for a better understanding and a better balance when it comes to changes of that at the same time, I I think too much hero too much rose tinted glasses and heroism is is lean is laid upon the fact that CCP had this economist at one time. I'm not saying the economist did nothing for the game. I'm not saying the economist was good or bad. I I, I don't know. I don't know what the exact net effects were of that. I I think the more important part is CCP to be more transparent about the motive and direction of some of the changes and to make these changes. Can't say this enough. In smaller iterative steps. <laughs> Smaller meaning you release, less change at once, and iterative meaning you actually go back and you iterate upon a series of changes and improve it. Don't just open up a new quadrant and then start doing something net different. Uh, someone in chat guessed it, by the way. Um, I, I want to hit on something really quick on in Twitch chat that came up. So we, we have a new bro in, in Twitch chat, which is awesome. Uh, so shout out to NickZ1. Welcome to Eve. Welcome to the chaos. Uh, he said we're killing his Eve vibes. Uh, you're gonna find something interesting about Eve. Uh, this this is the game. You know, people people say it's like the game people hate to love and love to hate. Whatever. Uh, I love Eve. I love the experience out of Eve. There is no other game like it. Uh, it is by far one of my favorite games. One of my favorite ways to use my time. I'm also a very harsh critic of it because I've seen what it can be. I've seen what we've gone through so far to get here in my time and talking to people who have been here in the full 18 year course or near the full 18 year course of the history, I've seen what it came from. And there's a lot of passion invested in it. And that's also how you know you found a pretty interesting and worthwhile community for sticking around is the amount of passion you see poured into this is where all this vitriol comes from and us saying, uh, you know, all the Eve 
you know, all the things we say that we are critical about within, even critical about within CCP. Uh, one thing you won't hear me saying is I, I don't really get a jump on this Eve is dying, Eve is going to uh, disappear next year bandwagon, because I've seen Eve die like 32 times in the time I've been playing <laughs> Eve, so it's, it's not going to die. But CCP also needs to take action to improve and to foster what makes this game so uniquely great. Well, I think what's important too is that like if like if we didn't like the game and we didn't we hated it, like this show wouldn't exist. Like if there weren't people that you know legitimately enjoyed the game and didn't want to see it, you know, be better than what it is. Because at the end of the day, like I still have fun whenever I log into Eve. Like I, I still enjoy going around and dicking around with my friends and all that fun stuff. Like Eve is still a really fun game and it's a great time to get involved in it. It's just it it needs work. Yeah, mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, too. I'm not somebody who goes on talk. Like, I don't really go on talk shows anymore outside of this one. Because I know uh, Karama, I guess. But um, I, I don't go around, like, you know, sounding the horn of the end of Eve or any of this shit. Like, yeah. this is not, like, I'm not a negative person. I don't go around bashing CCP about anything ever, right? Like, I'm, I'm a very, generally very even keel person when it comes to uh, changes and, and things in the game and all that, right? But when you've had two years of of this kind of very destructive deflation of the of the economy and there doesn't seem to be like that doesn't raise any kind of alarm at ccp or at least from from my perspective has not raised any kind of alarm at ccp in fact that seems to be the way we want things to go i am very very skeptical and i think that you know just saying something on a show like this hopefully um gets people you know and it's been said on a bunch of shows like don't get me wrong right like i'm pretty sure ccp have gotten the fucking message at this point but i mean come on dude like you can't do two years of this shit and then and and expect everyone to still be like yay this is great (laughs) it makes things immensely fucking difficult right so this and 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 don't get me wrong again these changes are very easy to think you can dial shit back they they dialed it in you can dial it back well, they uh, have dialed back before, and actually, you know, it, it, I, I gotta interject and say they're dialing back right now. Look at the changes that were supposed to go live. Look at the first iteration that released on CC and compare it via Mossworks to, or not Mossworks, sorry, uh, Fuzzworks, uh, to to what's uh, what's recently gone to CC, and we're seeing stuff get dialed back as we're speaking. So there is an opportunity here to dial back. CCP don't make it hard to love you. We just want to love you, baby. Yeah, no, exactly. And like, I'm I'm a huge CCP supporter generally. I under I understand it's not an easy job. Okay, I get it. I I understand for the most part the ins and outs of what's kind of happening here. And you know, again, you have a new game developer that comes in. Uh, there's a lot of information here. There's a lot of shit to do. And and you want to make your own mark on a video game as somebody who's you know I, I get all that. I, I understand. Uh, the thing is, is like you also have to like maybe maybe do a little science before before you completely flip everything over and maybe see if if this is in fact the right course to, to go down and like economies in general are relatively hard if not sometimes impossible to predict right you can go on cnn and there's going to be like a person there that has one opinion you flip to the next channel and somebody has another opinion about the economy and how things are going and how things are looking and what you should invest in you can go on the internet and find hundreds of people who have different opinions on on the stock that i should be investing in because nobody really knows at the end of the day what's going to happen with that stuff right so I think that we have to, CCP should take note of that and have a little bit more respect for that. Um, and hopefully that 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 is what's happening now. Uh, I'm optimistic. I don't think the game's going to die. I started an alliance. Like, it better not fucking die. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm forging yeah. ahead here. I'm just saying, like, let's, uh, it's time to dial it back. Because if that doesn't happen, we're going to get another Castles in the Sky, Oracles and Skill Injectors and... I mean, what? while that's great, there for are me, fates worse worse than death. Sure. What's um? What's the name of your new alliance, Loki? <laughs> it's like been said three hundred times on the show. Uh, I know, Hero, I, I, Hero Coalition dot. Uh, know, just, 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 go ahead, just go ahead. Just go ahead and send us the isk for this free advertising. After yeah, no kidding, people. right? So need to come <laughs> no, here was, every week. No, I was just going to say, chat. It's like there's an alliance to remember not to join. That was all. Oh, there we go. <laughs> you know, what's actually quite interesting about setting up a new alliance under all of this is that it is kind of difficult to look through the noise of what's actually going to happen because CCP have kind of changed their mind on some stuff, which I mean is good because the players are kind of getting to them a little bit and they're saying, oh, okay, well, maybe we should fix this. But generally, it's actually like I'm literally building systems to accommodate some of the newer 
things that are going to be happening. We'll put it that way. So I think it's actually not, it's not that big of a deal for us because we're able to implement systems with people and, and other people that are able, you know what I mean? Like we can make this whole thing around the coming changes what instead of like having this giant infrastructure already in place where now we have to completely rework right i think it's a lot easier to just when you're starting from the ground up to to make that kind of stuff happen too so we'll see how it goes but i mean so far it's been going great for us so like i'm, I'm not i'm not necessarily even complaining all that badly i mean i just i want to see the game in a healthy spot right for everybody it's not it's not a mm -hmm. us thing or whatever it's it's an everyone thing at this point because I just, uh i like this game i just want to see lots more capitals that i can kill that's what I'm looking for. But we won't see them very often anymore, sadly. Um, I, hey, hey. I, Sorry, what were you going to say, man? I think the path to improvement is shorter than most people are thinking, and I think people feel a little bit hopeless because of the lack of communication from well, CCP yeah. around it more than the actual individual. I don't... I'm not saying the changes are good. Don't, 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 don't misunderstand me there. The changes are definitely not good, what's going on right now. What I'm well, saying is that the path to fix them is not as far away as, as some might hopelessly feel. It's just CCP with their un typical under communication with massive changes is creating a perceived disparity that's way bigger than it needs to be seen as. Way bigger. Well, let's go back to what I, was, what I mentioned before. It was irrelevant to what the changes are and how they... It's because over a, a period of time, as you were saying, Loki, is that there has been changes that have made us gradually more and more fucking miserable. So um, I think like a big part of that, a big part of all those things that have made us miserable have brought us to this point. Um, oh, yeah, and sure. obviously... Um, like, look, I started the game at a time where the, the moons used to mine them fucking selves, right? Like, you put a, <laughs> you put a structure on the moon, it mines itself. Right? Right? So you have you have a couple of dudes who are there to, they have the skills to, you know, turn that shit into <laughs> ships and stuff, right? And then you had some crabs who did the other stuff, the ice and all this other stuff in Nullsack. Great. So you needed, like, you know, some industry, right? And then you could just go around the universe. You can take these, you can put pauses up or take pauses, you know, shoot pauses and, and put them up for yourself. Take these R64s or whatever it was, right? And and make some misc for your for your SRP fund. And when that stuff all went up and eventually the, the big null blocks kind of ganged up on you, you could move someplace else and do it again. And it was just, it was good fun. It was part of what your group was about. Uh, and and it was it was just PvP, right? That went from okay, well now we have to do this stuff manually. Here's this giant machine that can get this done for you. Everyone gets into the giant machines. Okay, cool. It's more in, it's it's like it's more involved, but we can make this work. Now we're at a point where it's like, well, these giant machines aren't really going to do that much for you. So now we need like a thousand little dudes and ships to come out and moon, mine your moons for you. I'm like, holy fuck, dude! Like so. Literally, what I mean, what Hero Coalition is currently is a 50 50 split between industry and PvP, and that's how it has to be. There's no other way around that. And if you're not a group that has an industrial backbone, I mean, at this point, you gotta be one, or you don't, you're not living right now. We've, we've seen a lot of little alliances folding into bigger alliances over the last couple of weeks. Probably because of this. I mean, maybe not, but I'm gonna say it's mostly because of the economic changes and the fact that it's hard to support a whole SRP program, you know? If you don't have the manpower to mine to mine to mine your space out and and build those ships and get everything done efficiently, like you, it, it's going to be tough, man. So what this does is then concentrates everyone into these larger null blocks, which people have said is not necessarily the best for the game. And you know that's that's where we're at. So it probably yeah. you know taking a little bit. Making it more intensive, probably, I don't know if it's the right move or not the right move. You guys can argue about that all day long. But uh, again, I came from a place where the mine, the moons used to mine themselves and all I had to be worried uh, about was shooting people in the face. So. Yeah. Oh, that was, that's, again, before my time. But yeah. Uh, the only time, going going back about the, the CCP bashing, the only time I ever did that is whenever they cancelled Blackout. I was very upset with that. I, I cannot emphasize because that was the most amount of fun I've ever had in this game. Was uh, during blackout. Talk about uh, shooting fish in a barrel, man. Oh man, <laughs> just so good. Oh, oh, man. Was... We we would just bomb. We wouldn't even bother with the oracles. We would just bomb the excavators. Oh, <laughs> so man. like we're just waiting for like the one rock to be left, just... and then we just bomb the shit out of that, and then I... get the fuck out. Go on oh, to the next man. one. I honestly see the adrenaline. I had to have a fucking lie down afterwards, man. It was mad. 
and uh, the amount of stuff we got to kill. And there was the the there was uh, it was just too much, man. <laughs> it was just too good. <laughs> It was just too good. That was again. But, that was a highly that was a highly uh, debated uh, you know change as well, right? I, I I don't I don't understand why what the negative behind that was. Or like I cannot wrap my head around why that was a problem. Like people, this, people needing uh, things to be safer, risk risk mitigation. Well, the the whole point. This is you fucking you've done it. This is the whole point. They try and sell this game in null as you're not protected by police. Blah and all that. They try and I, I think you remember reading in an article saying this is the wild, wild west of the game. That cheesy comment, but the point of it is you're not protected by anything. So that's the whole point of now is it's supposed to be the most dangerous part of space. Yep, I was listening that's, to a. I was listening like, to a what, what, wait, why? Why is that? Like, that's what they try. And, that's what the developers try and sell. So. You're going against against what you're trying to sell, and as a result, they've got used to such a matter of being protected by these umbrellas, and because that was all taken away from them, there was this fucking uprising, and it was so ridiculous. It's like, well, instead of complaining and bitching, why not take measures to protect yourself better? Why not have a constructive solution instead of just being little bitches? That's, yeah, I mean, that's that was my set. that was my because it was the most like the amount of people that they got resubscribing because it was such a fresh and that's what we need right now is it was because it was such a fresh and new type of PvP because you had much less against you because there's tools in this game where there is like Rockles are notified when you're five systems away or something like that or you fucking enter the region. That's the kind of that's the kind of thing you're up against. But whenever that is taken away, holy fuck, I actually have to be at my machine. You know, it was such they had so many new players resubscribe that I haven't played in fucking five years because also, of this. You're also you adding know. fog of war back into the game, right? A little bit. Exactly. Um, and and like, what, I remember listening why to an old, is... yeah, like listening to an old podcast, like uh, at least Randolph was saying. Uh, something about how you know, like back in back in the old days when you had these these armor hack fleets or whatever, right? Like you didn't necessarily know who was coming to this fight. You didn't know what was in the next system. You relied on scouts, right? You just relied on scouts to to make sure that your route is relatively safe, and that's yeah. what you did. And whoever shows up shows up, and then we're gonna see how the fight goes, right? Nowadays it's like we know exactly who's showing up, who's coming, where they are at all times. We have spies in their fleet. We have relays. Mm-hmm. We have all this shit. So like at least having having local. Um, not reactive or not showing or whatever it was right like it added a little bit of risk back into nullsec for sure now obviously there's backlash because you have to obviously look at the fact that these people are in these large null blocks to mitigate risk right and now you've made it very risky to be in said null space so i understand why they got mad but here's the uh, sound of the world's smallest space violin playing a tune exactly 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 exactly. uh delayed local that's all I have to say about that. That's 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 yep. my in, that's the entirety of my comment. Yep, for sure. Uh, I do miss it, but listen, I also wanted to uh, come on and be very um, awkward uh, and say very much a thank you to Riker because, like, before I started doing this, uh, I was very nervous and anxious, and he helped me along the way in his own very special sort of booster sort of way and now i was able to do a co-host much better than obviously my replacement of course so a very and everyone who listened uh like i don't know how, well if there was anyone that listened or in chats when i was here thank you to those people as well so i never got a chance to do it the last time i was here because that was the week after the announcement of um the mining changes so there was like 50 people that came on to the show shouting at each other all day so it made it kind of a bad opportunity. So, uh, I, so yeah, I just wanted to tell you guys that because that was a thing. So there you go. Um, it was so there, and also um, I hopefully that was that didn't sound you you, you caught most of that. Um, I don't have Phantomite on here to translate for me if you didn't understand any of that. 
Yeah, somebody from the chat just said that I'm dominating the show, and I was going to reply. I have to log into my Twitch account, so I was just going to say it here. Then, uh, yeah, Fandom Mike's not here, so somebody has to do it, right? So, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. That's, that, why, why do you think we don't? We, we bring people on the show. No, we want to hear from the voices. And uh, 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 No, I, if, if I'm going to have somebody on the show do a lot of talking, uh, Loki and Dex, uh, definitely great choices. Uh, Dex, Dex, best Karama co-host. I, I'm just a stand-in. But, uh, and then I got to agree, <laughs> Karama's good people. No question about that. Good people. Um, all right. So, so what else do we want to talk about? Cry I'd say I hope I'm good people because you know I created everything. Yeah. And it was see, taken over. See, see, what I, see what I mean in his very special Busa sort of way. <laughs> very I'm, I'm not even in Busa anymore. I'm just a free agent yeah. now. Oh, uh, all right. Yeah, you were saying, but yeah, it was. I can show you all sorts of DMs in uh, his supportive messages. <laughs> I'm not nervous at all whenever I come on. So, but yeah, it's really uh, interesting, um, Dax. Just about that is like I, I did like 50 episodes or more of like uh, a certain other podcast that's on this uh, streaming network. And, how dare uh, you? How you, dare you mention? And, how and dare you're allowed you? to. Say, you're allowed to say those names. Like so, Trash Talk Tuesday, right? So we did Trash Talk Tuesday. I did like 50 something, maybe 60 episodes. I don't. I did a lot of fucking Tuesday nights. And um, and it's a skill, man. And that's that's kind of like I started doing it, and and I was kind of nervous. I was nervous a little bit about it. And like, I the biggest thing for me is not saying the wrong fucking shit because I, you know, I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I like to talk a lot. And when you talk, when you talk, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't look. I wouldn't have noticed. When you, when you I, talk I'll, I'll let you know that. You end up saying you end up saying the wrong things, right? So it is literally. It's there's a skill involved in literally like taking uh, the words that are randomly coming out of your mouth at any instant, right? And having those form to a way that not only makes sense but have a broader theme within the context of like you know, whatever it is that you're talking about. It's actually mm. a very interesting thing, and I think that. Um, it alleviates a lot of like public speaking stuff for me as well now, right? So having started an alliance, there's a lot of public speaking. You you need to sound like you know what the fuck it is that you're doing sometimes, right? If you're mm-hmm. going to leave an alliance. So yeah. the podcast for me actually really helped uh, in that regard quite a bit. It's it's I think it's a muscle that your your brain just kind of needs to 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 flex yeah. a little bit. And once you've got that though, um, it's incredibly helpful. So. I'm just gonna say, like, you know, I mean, yeah, just just keep flexing that muscle, dude. Your your uh, your nervousness will soon subside, and then you'll just be running your mouth uh, on a talk show for fucking two hours. Exactly, man. It's uh, as I said, I, I come on. I started doing this, uh, and the the nerve levels were off the scale. They were sweating and all that, but now, um, the only reason that I stopped doing it is because, like. It's it was kind of funny, like some of the political stories. I would sit in, I would I would read them, and it's like I don't fucking care. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> I just do not care. You, so, have, to, you, have, I, you have to have a taste for the the, the yeah. drama so, side. You you're not wrong. You're not wrong. So uh, as I was saying to Riker, I just felt it was important that someone that was uh, a little more invested in those stories would make for a better show. So and hopefully I was right. Um, Hey, so, uh, but yeah, I, I, a lot of the stories, and plus I'm not on Reddit, so uh, I don't really, I'm not kind of first-hand knowledge when it comes to those stories as well, because I understand Reddit is the place to be if you want to read about these fucking political dramas, am I right? Am I, or am I wrong there? Uh, yeah, sometimes, sometimes you're definitely right. Uh, <clears throat> I find politics fascinating, like just just generally, right? Like IRL, uh, other countries. Like I just find that whole thing very fascinating. The fact that it happens in a video game on such a large level is pretty, pretty fun for me. Uh, why are people arguing? Why do people give a shit about this? Like, like what what are the, the series of choices that were made that caused this to be, begin with? And why are people so angry about it? It's it's I don't know. I love I love this shit, dude. So. Just to uh, to react to what Nuke Z One says, uh, he asked, "Should I get a cloak for my Helen for exploration?" Yes, absolutely, so that no one can shoot you. Just no, just just get it. Uh, there shouldn't be that question at all. Um, if you're doing that, just that's an important thing to mention. As you should always have a cloak. So, yeah, we're talking to movies here, cloaking, and, uh... so. 
tra train the skills up, get to a uh, get to doing Tech Two X Blow and either so we are a Tech Two X Blow ship, so you can use a Cubops cloak and experience the glory that is warping around cloaked as well, and that'll uh, protect your loot. That'll go a long way to protect your loot even further. And then eventually you can come on these shows and complain for a while. Yeah, um, yeah, you, you can talk about how CCP ruined X Blow, which. Uh, You'll definitely start to form some strong opinions about that, and you'll realize that's when oh. you realize now I really love the game. The mini game. Do you guys remember that? The clicking the cans. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So the funniest so thing happened to me with that, like I ignored that stuff for like a long time, and then I finally got into it. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go do this because a bunch of people are doing it, and I watched some YouTube videos on it. And I okay, I I understand now, and and I go to these sites now, and and I I, I wait for the exploding can thing to happen, and then it just mm -hmm. doesn't happen anymore, and I'm like, what did I do wrong? And it took me like a while to figure out that CCP had actually just changed it. So I actually <laughs> never got to play the fucking exploding can game. And I'm uh, kind of mad about well, it. So it doesn't explode anymore? No. No. There, they... used, to, there oh, used to be, yeah, that thing where like the cans would just literally like eject from like the central can or whatever. Yeah, that, I don't think no, that happens so, anymore. Why, 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 no, did the, they, the, why, why did they cancel that? Why would they, why, why? Uh, I, 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 yeah. I, I, I used to, like, way back in the day, I was, that was actually one of the first activities, like, first uh, activities I was drawn into in EVE, was I thought Explo was pretty cool. I think it's a great idea for new brewers to at least dabble on it, see how much you like it. I think Explo is actually a genuinely cool activity in EVE. Uh, so, yeah, I remember the exploding cans well. Uh, I had another new bro uh, in our corp, uh, actually, uh, this a couple of corps ago, but he told me, uh, like, I was describing to him, like, watch out for the exploding cans, and, like, was waiting, and, like, I was, I was like, sitting to re hit F5 refresh on a Z-kill to watch his first losses come in from cans, and, yeah, it just, it, it doesn't anymore, so, I, I, I don't know what the full story is there, maybe someone with a lot more uh, time invested and, and tenure invested in Explo can shed light, but no, the, the mini games have changed. There is still mini game element. There's still the coherence and all that stuff matters, but y you don't have the same uh, same kind of experience we we may remember from our days of yore. I think I think exploration is actually really important for newer players, though. To be perfectly honest, like when I when I started doing it, I was a little bit more established. We'll say like maybe a year into the game or something like that, but which is you know not that established anyway. But uh, you know, I, it led me to places like Aridia, where I'd never been, and I, I, I ended up randomly jumping to like Black Legion's staging at the time, and almost, <laughs> and almost dying. And I'm like, what is going on? Who are these people? And people on comms with me were laughing because like you're gonna That's die. That's pretty dude. great. Like, yeah, like what, what is this? And like, well, what group is it? I, I right click and it's Black Legion, and they're like, and Elo had just come back from a fleet or something, and I'm just like, like what's going on? This is crazy. And there's like this whole other area of space I'd never been in that I got to roam around in because I found a wormhole. You know, like that shit's awesome, man. Like it's it's yeah. just good for the game. Yeah. And it teaches you the the counterplay within PvP because you know we talked about like uh you know we talked about our, our negative feelings about PvP being turned off for abyssals basically, but uh one of the things to mention is that PvP is double sided in Eve. Uh, I do a lot of PvP without guns on my ship. Jump rating, PvP. Explo, PvP. There is a lot of PvP to be had in this game that has to do with avoiding death and staging up people to do what you want versus what they want to do. And uh, it's a really valid part of the game, and I agree with you, actually. I think every new bro should spend some quality time learning Explo, learning these mechanics, because they pay massive dividends. I have a solution. I'm ready. Um... My body the is solution there is delete the TTT. <laughs> 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 that that is well, but uh, bring back blackout. That's my solution. That's oh, just, that's the, that's that's the solution to everything. I would say that's that that would be if you complain about PvP, just bring that back, and then everything is okay again. Because mm. that was just too good, man. Or that you know, maybe good. introduce a mechanic where local is de delayed. No, no. Echo? Should, Echo? Do, lo Echo? Lo <laughs> local should never exist. No. Hmm. It's just blackout or not at all. It's just blackout. It was just fucking too good. Honestly, the I think in one evening we killed 60 billion on one night. That was, in, I think it was like a two hour period because like players played it like it was a single player game. It was fucking amazing. <laughs> Honestly, it was just astonishing, man. It was, um, I mean, oh, I, sure. I currently like, like it's a single player game. I'm sitting here with a Navy issue Scorpion running missions. <laughs>
Eve is a multiplayer game? Oh, I better adjust Who my play style. <laughs> Here's one last question for you. All right, and this obviously this is for everyone. Like, I could never really wrap my head around why, like during and again, I apologize, but the the whole tranquility trading tower thing, like null blocks, all three of them. So all three of them are part of that. So we were funding goons while we were killing them. Yep. And like, I can't wrap my head around that. Why didn't? See, like, this is this is why we just need to, you know, delete the TTT. Hang yeah, on, it's... can we just uh... can we can we talk about that for one sec though? So is that sandbox gameplay? Because I think it is, right? Like, does that qualify? It should. It's political meta game. It's absolutely sandbox gameplay. There's nothing wrong. So the, the arrangement there is, is well, a little no. bit more. It's a little bit more in depth than just you know people saying, oh, let let's get together and make this one market and then just all benefit from it instead of PVPing. Uh, there was PVP leveraged against TTT, and that's why so many people had their hand and were gaining profits from it. Uh, I also think that the TTT, uh, for, for all of the problems that uh, high sec market mechanics uh, have had, uh, it also gave a great lesson example on how in a complex economy, such as Eve's, you need to diversify your interests, or you might end up in a situation where your entire alliance can't continue a war because you are, ga you are gaining upon one particular interest a little too much. So, you know, there's a little bit of object lesson for everybody in TTT. That said, um, I, I, I am fine with the shift in tax mechanics from an individual player perspective. You know, I'm, I'm not seeing any fat paychecks from TTT myself. So, uh, you know, while my alliance certainly has benefited from it and I guess continues to benefit in different ways from it, uh, that, that, that means a lot less to me than what I think matters for the longevity and the capability of the game. I also don't yeah. think it's the disastrous destruction that uh it, it gets it gets painted as i think there's a lot worse economic imbalances than the disparate tax rates between citadels and npc stations but like but like if we were shooting guns why don't we just stop paying them from ttt it's just throwing that out there uh, uh have you ever participated in a high sex citadel battle yeah, it's a problem. I'll, t I'll, I'll take what is the worst kind of PvP and E for a thousand Alex. Uh, it's it's absolutely it's terrible. No, nobody wants to, nobody wants to defend that thing and nobody wants to attack it. Yeah, and if you fit it right, like a high sex citadel can be pretty fucking deadly. Like I know Vili said that. Oh well, you know it's pretty easy to kill a a, a keep star in high sec. Yeah, well if it's properly fit and it's got a fuck you fit on. It's relatively difficult. It is. It is not easy to kill a high sec keep star. So, I'm, I'm going right. to. I'm going to very, very strongly disagree with him there. There is no world in which that keep star is easy to kill. So in mm. one in one sense, we we all agree. I we kind of agree that's probably something that shouldn't be around and CCB should have so, looked past so, that. But it, it's also like you know this is this is a, another another aspect of where players were able to to get around changes and. Show CCP why listening to players sometimes is probably a good idea because they they obviously outthought the whole process and came up with a yeah. pretty it's interesting, really... elegant solution to making some misc for for free, right? Like instead of it going to the NPCs, eh, it should go to me. So let's just do that, which I, I kind of respect, to be perfectly honest. I mean, I don't yeah. have to like it, but I kind of respect it. Can we can we also can we also laugh at certain lines for relying on one single source of income to fund the war? Yeah, or how about this? Y'all buy my uh, my blueprints, and uh, yeah, because I'm, I'm selling blueprints that I need to get rid of. Somebody please buy Karama's blueprints so I don't have to hear about them um, anymore. I, buy, anybody, buy the anybody, buy them all, buy them all. What blueprints do you have? I have a bunch of capital uh, construction parts or various capital components all researched for a uh, 22.1 bill. It's like 13. Do you... Do you accept installment? Uh, I need the money up front. <laughs> <laughs> he he accepts installments, but you won't receive the product until the installments are paid. Uh, okay. uh, I, I also you. accept payment for his blueprints. Uh, you can pay me <laughs> uh, double the ISK for the blueprints, and you will receive those blueprints. So that, that's another option you have. For right you <laughs> <laughs> sure, because I'll just take half the ISK and give it to you. 
that See, that's, I'm, that's I'm, the sandbox at work. <laughs> listen, I'm, I'm just trying to get rid of these blueprints so that I can buy my fleet and I can go off and do stuff. And we are all trying to go off and do stuff. Speaking of going off and doing stuff, what else do we have? I mean, if you guys want to open up a whole other can of worms and rabbit holes, like we could talk about the FC stuff we talked about, but that depends on how much time we want to spend doing it. I mean, we've been going for like two, two and a half, almost three hours. So. We're, we're coming into hour three. I think here's what I would like to do. I do want to open that can of worms. I want to open on a fresh episode of B2K, and I can think of a couple other FCs I want to invite, and I want to make uh, make some people talk about this. I I I want to I want to put some sweat to uh, some some brows and get some people talking about that very topic that we're uh, we're alluding to there. So, what do you say, Loki? Will you come back next week? Hell yeah, dude! Yeah, let's do it. I like it. Come. I'll come back and run my mouth a little bit. No problem. I, I, I thought we could talk into doing that. <laughs> well, everyone, uh, if you enjoyed this episode of B2K, uh, we hope you did, at least. If you didn't, well, then why are you still watching? Uh, new and post streams, e-related content throughout the week. I'm not going to go through the shows because I have pretty much lost track of them all. Um, if you're interested in seeing them, why don't you hit that follow button? This has been Between Two Keep Stars. Always remember to bubble wrap your Keep Stars when putting them down. And uh, we'll see you next week. That's the end of the show, by the way.